beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the Word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed john 8 36. Let's read together. Ready? One to read. So if the Son liberates you, makes you free men, then you are really and unquestionably free. Hallelujah. Obadiah 1 and verse 17. Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 17. Let's, we can go back to King James. Obadiah 1 17 but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and shall possess amen now I'll be teaching you on the structure and the operation of Satan the structure and the operation of Satan that also includes demons we want to look at the structure how does the demonic kingdom how is it built what is the structure like and what is the modus operandi of satan how does he operate hallelujah praise the name of the lord a few scriptures now because we are dealing with a very delicate subject we are going to be doing a lot of scriptural readings and i want you to write them and then read them follow very closely because you will be learning that the greatest antidote to darkness and error is truth. Are we together now? Revelation chapter 12 will start from verse 7 to 9. Revelation 12, 7 to 9. Is it alright if we read this together? One to read. And the dragon fought and his angels. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You would notice there. Please help me with my screen. You would notice there. The Bible says there was war in heaven. Then it says Michael and his angels. Michael and his. Michael and his. And then they fought against who? And then the dragon also fought and his so immediately we see that there is a structure even while it was in heaven satan did not do it alone the bible acknowledges that there were certain angels that followed that rebellion satan and his angels hallelujah satan and his angels matthew 25 and verse 41 we're looking at a few scriptures that piece together the structure of the demonic kingdom ready then shall he say unto them on the left hand depart from me ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his so satan has subjects satan has a 
a, a system, an organized demonic system. We know that Satan has angels. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 4. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 4. Are you ready? For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved to judgment. So it's not only Satan that sinned. He did not sin alone. The Bible tells us that there were angels that sinned. I don't want to complicate your understanding tonight with this story. Hmm. Matthew 12 and verse 26. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 26. Remember this was when Jesus casted out a demon spirit and then they accused him. What was the accusation? That he was using Beelzebub, the prince of demons. So Jesus was giving them explanation now. Are we together? Listen, let me tell you this. You are not as powerful as your knowledge of spiritual things. You are as powerful as your knowledge of scripture. Knowing spiritual things is not where strength comes from. Knowing the scripture. He said, ye err, not knowing the scripture. You must be sound in scripture, not just in spiritual things. Just because a thing is spiritual does not mean it is consistent with the word of God. The simplicity of the knowledge of scripture is where the believer's authority comes from. Are we learning now? Please give it back to us. Matthew 12, 26. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. Who is speaking here? Jesus. How shall... Please, can you help me with my screen? It's coming on and off. Gentlemen, let me just use this for time. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then shall his kingdom... Who tells us here that Satan has a kingdom? Jesus himself is acknowledging that Satan has a kingdom and that he intends for his kingdom to stand. But that the only way his kingdom stands is when he is united. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then shall his kingdom stand? Now, let's go to the Pauline epistles. Ephesians... Um, Let's start from chapter 1. Ephesians 1 and 21. Ephesians 1, 21. Paul began to give us the theological basis for our authority in Christ. And the first basis he gave us is our oneness with Christ. And then second, our positional advantage. And in explaining our positional advantage, he says here that we have been raised with Christ far above now he begins to give us an idea of a structure far above principality are we still together and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come that means there is a demonic structure are we together now ephesians chapter 6 please from verse 11 and 12. Ephesians 6, 11 and 12. Ephesians 6. But put the whole armor of God. Why? That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Hold on. You see what Paul is telling us here? Paul is speaking to people who are already saved. And he's saying if the only thing you have is just the awareness of the new birth experience, you will still be victims. There is something called the whole armor of God. We'll deal with that in part three. But it says that it takes the whole armor of God for you to be able to stand against the wiles. The wiles there means the devices, the strategies of the devil. Verse 12. Read with me if you can see it. Ready? One to read. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood hold on now be very careful as we read from there but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places it was paul that began to give us this revelation how do we trust the revelation of paul because Paul is not Jesus. 
And if we are to believe Paul, we must be able to vet where he got his revelation from. Because Paul was not part of the disciples that was directly mentored by Jesus. So how then do we trust that what Paul is saying is accurate? Ephesians chapter 3, beginning from verse 3. Before Paul began his discourse, he gave us the basis so that we will not doubt the depth of what he was communicating. Are you ready now? How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words. Verse 4, he says, Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Verse 5, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by... This is where I was going to. So who revealed to Paul? The Spirit. So we can trust what Paul is saying, because we have now examined the basis for his revelation. Are you seeing how doctrine is established now? We can't take chances because there were things Paul said that he said, I speak as a man. In other words, this is my opinion. Do not make a doctrine out of it. But now he's speaking in his capacity as an apostle. And he's saying, even though I was not with the disciples learning directly under Jesus, but the Spirit of God has come to grant me access to an explanation of something that was not yet known. That means even when the prophets talked about these things, they were just prophesying. It was not out of knowledge. It was just manifesting the Spirit. Are we learning? Write this down, please. Satan, alongside demons, or what the Bible calls evil or unclean spirits, make up what we call the satanic kingdom. Please write it down. Satan, alongside demons... The Bible calls them evil or unclean spirits. Make up the satanic kingdom. So when we're talking about the satanic kingdom, essentially, it involves Satan and demon spirits. May I remind you from last week's teaching that I taught you here that the arch enemy of Satan is not God. The arch enemy of Satan is man. There is no record in scripture it's impossible and it does not make spiritual sense and scriptural sense for Satan or God to be the arch enemy of Satan. The arch enemy of Satan is man. He does not steal and kill and destroy from God. Are we together now? Yes. There is no mention in the word of Satan attacking the word. But when the word became flesh and he became a man, Satan now followed him and attacked him until the wisdom of God led Satan to look like he killed him, only for him to resurrect in victory. Are you seeing that now? So Satan, alongside demons and unclean spirits, make up the satanic kingdom. Please look up. Some of you may be asking now, where do men, human vessels, come in? Because I'm sure that most of you are waiting anxiously for me to talk about the issue of witches and wizards. And you are wondering why I didn't include them in that list. Now, let me tell you this. Every human vessel, every human vessel that Satan walks through to execute his purposes. Listen carefully. Every human vessel that Satan uses is the same vessel intended to bring the glory to reveal the glory of God. Are we together now? The very nature of operating on earth here is such that you cannot operate on earth legitimately without a human participation. So the idea of man in partnership with the Holy Spirit is not Satan's idea. It is God's idea. The heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth has he, that Lord, given to the sons of men. Are we together now? Very, very important. So when you are defining the satanic kingdom, you don't necessarily bring men. Men were not created by Satan. They are God's creation and for his glory. He only took advantage of them because of ignorance and in compliance with the law of territory. Is someone understanding this now? 
What is the assignment of the demonic kingdom, corporately speaking? We know that Satan has a personal assignment ultimately to gain dominion and to bring transgenerational allegiance. But as a demonic structure, what exactly is their assignment? Write this down. To fight and frustrate the purposes of God by any and all means. That's it. To fight and frustrate the purposes of God by any and all means. This is the corporate motto and the corporate assignment of the demonic kingdom. To fight and frustrate the purposes of God by any and all means. To fight and frustrate the purposes of God by all means. Please look up. When we say the purposes of God, what are we talking about? Number one, coming to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. The first assignment of Satan in order of priority is to stop everybody who is on earth, if possible, from coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That is plan A. If plan A does not work and you now give your life to Christ, the next assignment is to frustrate your efficiency in terms of your growth and your efficiency in serving the purposes of God. Is it, is it clear enough now? Everywhere you see Satan, everywhere you see demons, everywhere you see evil men in partnership with these spirits, this is their corporate mandate to fight and to frustrate the purposes of God. And in order of priority, Satan's plan A is to make sure that they do not come into the knowledge because the Bible says in John 17 and verse 3, it says, and this is eternal life, that they may know thee, the one through God. John 17, 3, this is eternal life. He says, that they may know you, the one through God, and Jesus whom thou hast sent. Are we together now? What is eternal life? The knowledge of Jesus. Eternal life is not just responding to an altar call. That through the preaching of the gospel, I am not ashamed of the gospel, he says, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Everyone. Satan and the satanic kingdom, corporately speaking, have a singular assignment to fight and to frustrate the purposes of God by any and all means. The key phrase here is any and all means. Sickness is part of the any and all means agenda. Please look up. Delay any and all means agenda. Causes everything you call destruction or the expressions of his wickedness is part of that any and all means agenda. If Satan can use an accident, he will use it. If he can use a plane crash, he, can, he will use it. If he can use your dying, he will use it. If he can use your being sick, he will use it. Anything at all that will achieve that purpose, he will use it. Any and all means is an attempt to describe the extent of his determination and desperation. Can I tell you this? When you want to study desperation, study Satan. A man who is already aware of his imminent defeat, and yet in that imminent defeat he makes up his mind without fail that he will keep fighting. I hope you know that it's not only Christians that study the Bible. When Satan came to Jesus, at least we know how Jesus learned scripture in the flesh. He went to the temple to study. So how did Satan learn his own? All through scripture, everybody who understood scripture understood it by study. If man understood scripture, he understood by study. Even the word of God understood scripture as a human vessel by study. So how do you think Satan knew what was written? Hmm. The only way to be approved is to study. Is that true? Satan alongside demons and evil spirits make up the satanic kingdom 
And then they have a singular assignment to fight and frustrate the purposes of God by any means. We conclude from these scriptures that Satan has an operational system. Now, I want to teach you. We have looked a bit at the structure. I don't want to go into the details. Hopefully, in another teaching that relates to this, we'll look at what principalities and powers and rulers are. But all of these things just define three things. Listen. In understanding, maybe I should just put a word or two. In understanding the structure of Satan, the structure of Satan is defined according to three things. Number one, geography. Number two, functions. Please understand this. Geography means location. There are spirits that reside in heavenly places. That is their jurisdiction. There are spirits that reside in specific geographic regions. For instance, Gadara, do not cast us out of this region. Are we together now? So in structuring the satanic kingdom, Satan used a number of factors. Number one is geography. The Bible shows us that these demons themselves, they honor geography. Number two, functions. For instance, you can read in your Bible certain spirits called the spirit of death. A lying spirit. The spirit of infirmity. When we are dealing with deliverance proper, you will be learning that one of the ways we administer scriptural deliverance is not necessarily by knowing the name of every demon. You can identify them by the operation. Are we together now? Yes. In fact, the Bible tells us one time when Jesus came and met an epileptic patient and the disciples were trying to cast out that demon and nothing happened. The Bible says he rebuked the deaf and dumb spirit. And then number three, I gave you two. Number three, ranking. There are ranks. There are ranks, not only for angels, but there are ranks even for demon spirits. An example of that we see is in Mark chapter 5. We are coming there. When Jesus met the madman in Gadara, and he said, what is your name? He said, my name is Legion, for we are many. So there was a Legion, but it was not a Legion that spoke. There was one person who spoke on behalf of of that legion. Do you agree that there is ranking? Number two, Jesus himself was speaking about deliverance and he said when a spirit leaves a man he says it goes through dry regions. Is that true? Sourcing for a place of rest, not finding any. The Bible says it will say let me go back to my house and it will go back to his house. Who is the house now? The human vessel or any material vessel. And he will find it swept and clean. And the Bible says that spirit will go back and bring seven others greater than it. So there is ranking, classification, the structure of the demonic kingdom. Let me recap again. Number one is based on geography. Geography. There is the prince of Persia. The Bible identifies him with that geography. And then number two, based on what? Function infirmity sickness conditions and so on and so forth and then number three based on ranking let's go to the operational system i'm, I'm interested in this now the operational system we're looking at the structure and the operation of satan and the demonic kingdom now we're looking at the operational system Please look up. Every organization and indeed every kingdom has a modus operandi. That means they have a way that they operate. Are we in agreement with that? It is important to know how Satan operates. This is where spiritual intelligence comes in. Please, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that no spirit would distract you while you are listening to me. Because for some of you, you are going to be, God is going to be opening up to you. It is no mystery how Satan operates. 
The word of God in black and white, very clear terms, reveals to us how Satan operates. Two scriptures, Ephesians 6, 11. Does Satan have an operational system? Yes, sir. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles. The word wiles there is the word schemes or devices. The wiles of the devil. Schemes of the devil. So Satan does not just attack. There is a system. There is a game plan. There is a destruction plan. He does not just stand up and move around and say, how do I destroy this family? There is a plan. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. Let's read together if you can see it projected. One to read. Lest Satan should gain an advantage of us. Uh -huh. For we are not ignorant of his devices, 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 strategies. Now, please play very close attention. Let's identify from scripture some of the things that Satan and demons are involved with. We are looking from the lens of scripture now. We want to examine a few activities of Satan and demon spirits. The activities help us reveal the structure. Are we together? I mean the, the operation now. When you look at what Satan does, you also find in what he does, how he does it. Are we learning? I'll be giving you a few scriptures. Number one, Satan and demons fight. Write it down. The Bible shows us that Satan and even demon spirits, that they fight. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought. And the Bible says, the dragon fought and his angels fought. So it is part of Satan's character and it is part of Satan's modus operandi to fight. Two, Satan hinders or he resists. First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18. Satan resists. Demons resist. He says, wherefore we would have come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Who hindered them? Satan, a spirit, can hinder men. If Satan can hinder an apostle, it means he can try to hinder breakthrough, he can try to hinder lifting. Anything that is coming to you for your advantage, it is possible for Satan to try to hinder it. Number three, Satan and demons also, they steal, they kill, and they destroy. John 10.10 10. Everything that applies to Satan also applies to demon spirits. Satan and indeed demon spirits kill, they steal, they kill, and they destroy. John 10.10 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal. Most serious armed robbers go in groups. Are we together? When they want to rob, say, a bank, you don't find an individual, no matter how strong. It's usually a coordinated activity. The Bible says, He cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So Satan steals. What does he steal? Anything at all. What does he kill? Everyone and everything. Next activity that reveals the modus operandi of Satan. Are you ready? Satan and demons lie. Start that one. John, okay, let me give you one more scripture about stealing, killing, and destroying. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 19. Please write it down. Matthew 13 and verse 19. The Bible lets us know that Satan is a thief. Jesus was teaching this in the parable 
of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, he says, Then cometh the wicked one, another word for Satan, and catcheth away that which, which was sown in his heart. Can we imagine how Satan steals? He can steal and even enter your heart. Your heart that a doctor needs to use knife to open it. Satan can enter and steal. Or your spirit or whatever it is. He can steal anything. No wonder he can put a disease in your body without surgery. No wonder he can put anything there and he can carry something that was good. But in the name of Jesus Christ, he's finally meeting his resistance forever. Yeah. Next point. Satan and demons lie. John 8, 44. Satan, by his consistency of lying, earned himself a title that Jesus himself acknowledged as the father. You are of your father the devil and the lust of your father the lust of your father ye will do for he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie he is in his default state that means when Satan feels a lie there is no point feeling guilty that's who he is There are Yoruba people who speak Yoruba and English and Hausa and other tribes. But when you are speaking your local dialect, you speak it with confidence and joy. Here's what the Bible is telling you. You ever doubted Satan's language? What tribe is he? That's it right there. The Bible says that Satan, when he speaketh a lie, Jesus is talking now. He speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. The word father there is the same word. That is used towards God. Abba, an originator and a defender of a cause. That means you, it came from you and you guard it to make sure it remains. Ah. <laughs> the father of lies. I told you to start that one. You will soon know why. Next point, very quickly. Satan is a master of falsehood he disguises himself he uses the strategy of disguise or falsehood the strategy of disguise or falsehood second corinthians 11 and verse 14 Satan disguises himself. Are you ready? And no marvel, he says, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. One of the strategies of Satan is that he can use the tool of falsehood. He can disguise himself. Next, Satan deceives. Start that one, please. Satan deceives. We're studying the modus operandi of Satan. Satan deceives. Second Corinthians 11 and verse 3. Satan deceives. He's a master deceiver. Are you learning tonight? But I fear, lest by any means... As the serpent beguiled Eve, the word there is deceived. He beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So, your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. You know what Paul is saying? Paul is saying that Satan employed a strategy and deceived Eve. You know, I taught you that um, Adam was not deceived. Adam fell because of love. It was Eve that was deceived. Are we together? Absolutely, it's in your Bible. We're going to read that. There is, Adam was not deceived. It was Eve that fell. Eve was deceived. And Adam followed her because he loved her. The second Adam, who is Jesus, was he deceived? 
he came willingly because he loved his Eve, the church. The same pattern, you see. So, Adam, Adam was not deceived. It was Eve that was deceived. No, 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 it doesn't listen. Listen. This, I, I already know. I know what is in your heart. And Okay, let me show you. First Timothy 2, 2 and verse 14. If you think, First Timothy 2, 14. 14. 1 Timothy 2 and verse 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Women fall because of deception. Men fall because of love. So next time you say you are falling in love, ask yourself, must you fall? <laughs> the in love is not the issue. It's the fact that must you... <laughs> Let's get back to our discussion. We are discussing something very serious tonight. I reject distraction in Jesus' name. <laughs> Satan deceives. He's a master deceiver. Are we learning? Revelations 12 and verse 9. One last scripture that talks about the extent of his deception. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. Can you imagine that? He deceives the... Finally, we see from scripture that Satan is an accuser. The Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren. He does not just accuse anyhow. He looks for brethren. The accuser of the brethren. We are identifying some of the activities of Satan and demons to be able to help us to piece out by the intelligence of the Spirit a modus operandi, a structure. Now please write this. Of all the strategies and operations of Satan, of all the strategies and the operations of Satan, the most pronounced in the Bible is deception. Of all the strategies and operations of Satan, the most pronounced in the Bible is deception. Can you imagine that? That of the many strategies that we see that Satan deploys, the most pronounced based on scripture is deception. Please say deception. One more time, say deception. Write this down. What does it mean to deceive? We are now building an understanding on the operation of Satan, demons, and the dark kingdom. What does it mean to deceive? Are you ready? To deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true. To deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true. Comma, usually for personal gain or to take advantage of. I'll take it again. To deceive means to deliberately underline the word deliberately please to deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true comma usually for personal gain or to take advantage of we're defining deception now that to deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is a lie. It's not true. For your personal gain, the gain of the deceiver, or so that the deceiver can take advantage of the deceived. Of all 
the operations of Satan, the most pronounced according to scripture is deception. That means he is a master. He has mastered the art of making people believe what is a lie. And by causing them to believe it, he can take advantage of them. Lest Satan should take advantage of us. Because we are not ignorant that he is a deceiver. And that the only way he takes advantage of believers is when he brings you to a point where you believe and are convicted in something that is not true. Powerful. Write this down. Are you learning? Deception, which is the same thing as falsehood. I want to define it for you now. Deception, which is the same thing as falsehood, is a statement or action that is intended to mislead, comma, hide the truth, comma, or promote a false belief or idea. I'll take it again. Deception, which is the same thing as falsehood. Deception is a statement or action. Is a statement or action that is intended to mislead, comma, hide the truth, comma, or promote a false belief or idea. That's the definition of deception. A statement or action that is intended to mislead, hide the truth, or promote a false belief or idea. Full stop. You may want to add this. It is often done for personal gain. Deception or falsehood is a statement or action that is intended to mislead, hide the truth, promote a false belief or idea. Full stop. It is often done for personal gain. Isn't this powerful? That the chiefest strategy of Satan, as far as carrying out his agenda is, in the midst of all of these activities that we, we listed from scripture, that the greatest and the most pronounced is deception. Write this down, please, about deception. Very important point. Deception cannot happen until the deceiver is aware of the truth. Wow. Deception cannot happen until the deceiver is aware of the truth. It's impossible for deception to happen until the deceiver is aware of the truth. Because the assignment of the deceiver is to make the deceived to not understand or not receive the truth. That means for you to be a deceiver, the qualification to be a deceiver is that you must have access to the truth. Deception cannot happen until the deceiver, in this case Satan, is aware of the truth. So is it true that Satan knows that Jesus is Lord? Is it true that, Jesus, that Satan knows that there is victory given to the saints? Is it true that he knows that there is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved? Is it true that Satan knows that Jesus is now resurrected holding the keys of life? Is it true that Satan knows that Jesus gave us the authority over him? No wonder he does his ministry of deception so well. Because the basis of deception is that you must know the truth. Is someone learning now? It is impossible for a deceiver to be a deceiver in ignorance. Because a deceiver, the character of deception is that the very act of deception is done intentionally. Are we learning? Now, let's take a structured biblical study. I wanted to read a few scriptures that talk about deception, but we'll jump it for the sake of time. I want us to take one case study 
We are studying now how Satan operates. Are you ready? We want to take one Bible story and then we'll examine it closely. And I taught you here that theologically speaking, there is what we call the law of first mention. That every time you want to study a subject, a thought, or an idea, your first assignment is to go to where it was first referenced in Scripture and understand the contextual explanation or usage. That becomes your interpretation everywhere that word or that thought is used. Is that true? So we'll go to Genesis, but before then, let's look at two or three scriptures. John 8, 44. John 8, 44. Let's start from where we left off. Jesus is speaking now. And Jesus himself said a few things that are very interesting about the devil. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer when... He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Do you know what this means? Jesus did not say he was ignorant of the truth. He says he refused to abide, to live in the truth. He willfully came out of that realm of truth. He abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. Keep that scripture. Second Corinthians eleven three. Second Corinthians eleven three. But I fear, Apostle Paul is speaking to the church in Corinth, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve. So Apostle Paul here is using a story to show us the deception of Satan. Are you seeing where Paul is leading us to now? Paul is saying, if you want to study the deception of Satan, study what happened with Satan and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Because he's saying Satan will still use that strategy against you. Are you seeing now? He's saying just as Satan beguiled Eve through subtlety, he will also come to you and do something to you the same way he walked with Eve. Do you know what he's saying? He's saying when it has to do with that strategy... It is his master strategy. He will not change it. You study Satan's operation by studying what happened between him and Eve. First Timothy 2 and verse 13, where you read and laughed. Now I hope you don't laugh again because we're getting into a very serious discussion now. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Do we believe this? Verse 14. And Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Journey with me, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go to the book of the beginnings and see what exactly happened there. Genesis chapter 3. Story, story. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman. Now, when you read this, you will think it's just something that happened immediately in a matter of minutes. The Bible is written in summary. And so it does not give us the, the depth of the discussion. Because this is not just something that happened within minutes. I told you that in studying scripture, you have to use the mind of literature... You have to use the mind of a historian. You have to use the mind of an archaeologist. And then you have to use the understanding of a spiritual man. These are the four components you need to thoroughly study scripture. If all you have is the mind of a spiritual man, as powerful as that is, you will not really understand the Bible. Because the Bible has a literature component. The Bible has a historical component. The Bible has an archaeological component. And then it has largely a spiritual component. Are we learning? Now watch carefully, please. We are studying Satan now. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden. Now please listen carefully. Go back to verse 1. 
Do you know why Satan came to the woman directly to talk to her? It's not because she was female. Mm -mm. There was something about the structure of dominion. Are you getting the point now? That when God gave man dominion, in the Garden of Eden it was very clear that even though Adam and Eve as spirits had dominion, but based on that earthly structure within the family context in the garden, Adam and man was head over her. Are we together now? And Satan would not come directly and attack the head. But he knew that there was a connection between Adam and Eve. There was something he understood that he would not be able to easily deceive Adam. But he knew that based on that structure... There is a connection between Adam and Eve, and the connection is love. And that genuine love is love that comes with sacrifice. So he didn't need to deal with the man. He was not dealing with the man simply because he knew that once he got the woman, the love the man had for the woman would be why he would fall. So he didn't have to waste his time there. <laughs> Are you getting the idea now? That if I can get Eve, you will be seeing it. That when Eve ate, she gave her husband what you call eating now. For the sake of this discussion, we'll still keep it as that. Most people think she just ate and called him and said, Sweetheart, where are you? You will find out in the Bible he was standing right there with her. He fell because of love. The Bible says Satan came and met the woman. Now watch this. Notice the first thing, his conversation with the woman. Yea, had God said. Can you imagine? The beginning of his discussion mentioned God. Satan, look at the structure of his deception. Had God said. That means I told you that deception cannot work until what is true is known. Are you seeing the pattern here now? Satan wanted, all I need to know is what God told you. That is the raw material for my fabricating my deception. That means Satan has no business coming to your life until God speaks. The moment God speaks, Satan says, now I have something to work with. What did God tell you about your child? What did God tell you about your destiny? What did God tell you about your ministry? Deception is not possible until there is an awareness of the truth. In this case, what God said. Because everything God says is yea and amen. Let God be true and all men liars. Are we learning? And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden of Eden, are you noticing that there's something with that statement? He was doing something to the truth. When I tell you truth can kill, believe me, it's not only a lie that kills. He did something that forced her to defend what God said. Now the woman, verse 2. The woman said, Satan, you didn't get that right. Let me correct you. This is what he said. We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden and he was listening but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden god had said ye shall not eat it neither shall ye touch it lest ye die satan said thank you now let me show you that i have an advantage of age over you verse 4 do not be ignorant of the devil's devices are we learning how satan operates now when Satan comes to you, the raw material for his attack is what God has said. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Are you seeing now? Verse, do you know what he was doing to her here? He was shaking the basis for her obedience. That means, now that I know what God has said, I know that faith is obedience. My next assignment is to do something to you. For God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, 
your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as the gods knowing good and evil satan was saying god is so insecure there is something he's hiding from you and that is why he vetted out his insecurity by putting a strict rule don't mind him trust me there is something i know when you eat this your eyes will be opened and you will be like him knowing good and evil verse 6 when the woman saw everybody say when the woman saw hmm. the discussion started by saying but by the time we get to this point she has perceived saw there does not just mean eyes she has conceived as a reality the woman did not fall by eating the fruit eating the fruit was proof she had fallen this was where the fall started perception don't think he just came to her one day and spoke to her no that's why i told you the bible is written in summary you you need to use you don't come like that in one day and convince someone go and read your bible the Bible spoke about Joseph and Potiphar's wife. How many times did she come to him? Frequently. J Judas Iscariot. It was not just once they met him and said, deceive, deceive Jesus. It's within the character of Satan to be consistent. The same way you don't come and most times you don't meet a woman once and say, marry me. And then you have to come. Again. That structure. Satan was patient and came. And he said... When the woman finally saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the... That's not normal seeing, my brothers and sisters. <clears throat> there is a kind of seeing that had attacked her spirit. Are we together? The Bible says the tree to be desired. Look at all these, look at these emotional expressions. It's more than just seeing a tree. She was always looking at the tree. What did she now see? The Bible says she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Maybe in another time as God helps us, I will really explain to you what it really means, the concept of the tree and the fruit. But so that I don't disrupt the flow of what we're doing, we'll just accept it as eating. But you see, the concept of eating and the tree, these are, these are prophetic expressions. It may not necessarily mean tree and fruit, but it does not interrupt our understanding, even if we understand it that way. So we'll continue. The Bible says she did eat. Please, everybody, read the remaining part. And gave also unto her husband with her. Is it in your Bible? What did he do? Did he throw it? She ate. Now watch what happened. Do you know that when she ate, there was no effect. It was when he ate that something happened. Because the sheep only scatters when you strike the shepherd. She ate and she gave him. Ate from deception, he ate from love. In any case, they ate. That's the bottom line. And then the Bible says the moment that happened, notice Satan stopped talking to them. It was over. You thought that after eating, you say, now, how do you feel? That is the structure of deception. Now that he had achieved his goal, he will now leave them with God. And he says, now off I go. The Bible says the eyes of them were open. Did he tell them something like that will happen? Absolutely. He said your eye will open. But they did not understand what he meant. The Bible says, and they knew. Now, notice what happened here. There was already a disruption in the way God arranged the spirit of a man. Because the way God designed man was the spirit of a man was supposed to have the highest level of ascendance in direct touch with the spirit of God. 
the body would barely be an instrument of execution. Are we together? The mind that consists of the will, the emotion, and the intellect would midwife the spirit and the body. These are just the platforms for the spirit to be able to operate with the body. And now we see that something is wrong. You can see that the soul came alive. The eyes of them were open and they knew they were naked. You see shame, attributes of emotions. They sowed fig leaves and made aprons. They ran away. God is about to speak. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves. Everybody say fear. They hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Should you run away from the presence of the Lord? But now we see something happening to them. Are you seeing the way Satan works? He did not have to keep talking. The destruction can happen whether he's there or not. It's a programming. He has done something to them. The same way Satan can come and do something to a village. And after 30 years, it is still working. Whether he supervises or not. It's like a software. Now, he left these people. The next time we hear him talking was in answer to a question God asked him. Left the woman. Deception. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God amongst the trees of the garden. Verse 9. And the Lord called unto Adam. Are you seeing how God respected his own structure? When he came, he never spoke to the woman until man gave him permission to speak to the woman. When he came, he spoke to the man who had that seat of authority and dominion. Adam, you are the one I put alongside your wife. What has happened? I look spiritually and I don't see you sitting on that throne of dominion again. When he said, Adam, where art thou? God, God speaks spiritually. There was a position that you could see. You could look down to the earth and know that the man in charge is seated there. It is that same position that the demon said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. When we look in the spirit, we, all those who have dominion, we see that position. Where are you? Adam, where are you? You are lost. Adam. Who shifted you without pushing you? Who shifted you? Who, who gained mastery over you and made you to move? Fear off. You left the place of power and yet force was not used on you. That is the power of deception. I overcame. Hallelujah. He won the victory. Hallelujah. I overcame. Hallelujah. I overcame. Hallelujah. Listen. Are you seeing what Satan did? They thought it was just a conversation. They did not understand the spiritual implication. Adam, I check the place of authority and you are not there. Where are you? This is a tragedy that came upon men. You need to learn this because he's coming and he will use the same thing. Remember the structure. What did God say? God did not mean what he would say. And he will keep coming to you every day. He knows that persistence is powerful. Satan does not speak once. Let me tell you how he speaks. He uses words. He uses men. He uses things. He uses pain. He's still the one speaking. He will employ everything until he shifts you from that place. There is a place where when you stand, Adam... Now, let me teach you something powerful. For as long as man did not cooperate with Satan, Satan looked powerless. He was with them and could not touch them. He was with them and could not touch them. The power of Satan is in your falling for his deception. There was absolutely nothing he could do to Adam and Eve. 
the best he could do was speak. He had to depend on their seeing and their participating with his lies. And the Lord told him, where are you? Verse 10. Here's what Adam said. I heard your voice in the garden, but I was afraid. Something has happened to me. I heard your voice clearly. I've not lost my hearing, but I've lost my position. I was afraid because I was naked. Do you know what that means? The glory and the Shekinah that covers me has left. Something has happened to me. And I hid myself because I know what it means to not be covered by your glory. Verse 11. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Every time God comes to rescue you, the first question is, Who told you? You have opened up your ears to another influence. That means in any case, whether you are restored or you are deceived, it is based on what you were told. Now, understand the power of words. No, Adam, you've fallen. Who told you? I'm tracing the root cause of your problem. It came from information. Listen carefully. Dear father, dear grandfather, dear region, where did this witchcraft come from? It was not from the shrine. It came from who told you. Someone called you and said there is a way we make money. In Nigeria, you cannot just make money like that. Let me tell you sincerely. If it's money you want to make, there is one man. You say, no, no, no. Let me think about it. What, ha is, what was happening to Eve is happening to you. When Satan uses that man, do you see that that was the same thing that happened with Jesus? Satan came to Jesus directly. That was the last time he would come directly. The next time he used the emotion of Peter, then he used Judas. In any case, he felt he got him. Who told you that you were naked? Have you participated with what you heard? Did you do something about what you heard? Because every word we hear does not profit us if we don't mix it with faith. No matter what it is that you hear, if you have not mixed it with faith, the Bible says it will not profit those who hear it. So if Satan says, kill yourself, it remains as a thought for as long as you don't act on it. Wow! If you wake up from a dream, and in that dream you see an accident, and all of a sudden you allow fear and you start thinking that is satan speaking so this is how i would die you are receiving it you may not know you don't receive by your hands alone the principal way of receiving is your mind you only have with your hand you receive with your spirit you receive with your mind Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldn't eat? The first demonstration of irresponsibility as recorded in the Bible. Are you ready? And the man said, the woman. Is that the answer? Adam, have you eaten of the tree? Yes or no? What was his answer? The woman. He's showing you, this is the first expression of the weakness that is in humans. That we are usually comfortable transferring blames. It is not natural for men to take responsibility. By men here is genderless, humans. Adam, have you eaten of this? The woman that you gave me to be with me. Look at this description. Not longer the woman I love. Not longer the one we strolled in the garden together with. The woman that you gave me to be with me. In other words, it's not my fault. If I were alone, no way. Satan would not get me. I know you are laughing, but you understand what God is teaching us here. 
The family I came from is why things are happening like that. That's the same answer you are giving. Why are you not rising? Because we come from a family of idol worship. That's not the answer. I know you can laugh at Eve, but we are learning now that many of us have been making the same thing. And for as long as your answer seeks to transfer blame, salvation will be far from you. Are, are we learning now? This is a powerful spiritual concept. Two men were hanging on the cross with Jesus Christ. One of them, the Bible called them thieves. And one of them was quarreling Jesus, paraphrasing. Shame on you, we are on the cross, you are on the cross, you can't save us. The other one said, we are sinners, this man is righteous. Jesus looked at one and said, today you will be with me in paradise. What happened to the other one? Now watch this. I'm showing you how Satan, how man transferred the dominion to Satan. Watch how it happened now. Every time you pass blame on anything, you also give that thing authority over you. It's a spiritual principle. Let me repeat myself again. Every time you pass blame on anyone or anything, you give that thing authority over you. Blaming situations and circumstances for your life is giving them authority over you. No matter how legitimate you think it is. The man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she did give me of the tree and I did eat. He did not answer, I did eat alone. He had to tie someone else to cushion his guilt. And he said, yes, I ate, but hold on, hold on. The woman that you gave me is the cause for it. Now, are you seeing that? On legal basis, God could now talk to the woman. Because Satan has handed over responsibility to her. And the Lord said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? Sadly, she made the same mistake. And the woman said, Satan the serpent beguiled me. And I did What is this that you have done? The serpent beguiled me and I did it. Verse 14. He goes to Satan. And the Lord God said to the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art caused above all cattle and above all beasts of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go and thus shalt thou eat all the days of your life. Verse 15, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. There's no time to now begin to teach you all these things. He says to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow shall thou bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. 17, and unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife. You see now. You heard the voice of your wife. And you have eaten of the tree which I commanded thee saying thou shalt not eat. Cause is the ground. The ground is anywhere you sow. Cause is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it. All the days of your life. 18. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth unto you. And thou shalt eat of the herb in the field. 19. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return to the ground. For out of it was thou taken, and dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Let's stop there. What do we have to learn from this? Number one. Lesson number one. Understanding the operation of Satan, especially his deceptive nature, which is his strongest point over the saints. Number one, I told you that deception cannot happen until there is the awareness of the truth. Do you know what that means? Everything God tells you by speaking to you or by his word, guard it carefully because somebody is coming there. That adversary is coming to vet what God has told you. When Satan comes to you, his primary assignment is to find out what God said. Because everything God said represents where he's taking you to. 
Lesson number two. Are you ready now? Guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it comes the issues of life. Guard your ear gate. Guard your eye gate. Because these are the principal channels through which Satan speaks. Can I tell you this? If you think Satan will always appear to you and talk to you, it may not always happen like that. But he will use your ear gate. He will use your eye gate. Because these are the principal gates to your mind. Very soon you understand what Paul was teaching in his Pauline epistle. Is God helping us tonight? Number three. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and understanding. It is not just faith towards God comes by hearing the word of God. But faith towards anything comes by hearing the word of that thing. Faith towards destruction comes by hearing the word that makes for destruction. Faith towards failure comes by hearing the word that leads to failure. And hearing again until it crystallizes in your heart. Satan is a master of deception. He uses the word of God to shift you away from your zone of safety, from your zone of power, from your zone of defense. But in the name of Jesus, with this spiritual understanding, someone is gaining momentum and is gaining power to shake off everything that is an arsenal of darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Write this down very quickly. Levels of satanic influences. Very powerful truth you are about to learn. There are three levels of satanic influences over the saints as revealed from scripture. Three levels, principally. Number one, are you ready? Number one is called witchcraft. The first level of satanic influence over the saints is called witchcraft. Galatians chapter 3, please, and verse 1. Let's hurry up for sake of time. Galatians 3, verse 1. O foolish Galatians, he says, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus had been seen evidently set forth, crucified among you. Now please look up. The Bible's idea of witchcraft is not drinking blood and eating flesh. Those are just extended meanings. The Bible's idea of witchcraft is not going to a coven in the night and having a meeting. I'm not negating those things, but I'm telling you that the standard definition of witchcraft from the Bible has nothing to do with any of these things. Witchcraft, according to Bible definition, is anything that can cause you to err using the tool of deception. That is witchcraft. Causing a man to err Causing a man to go out of alignment using the tool of deception is the Bible's definition of witchcraft. The first way that Satan influences men is through witchcraft. That means he uses the tool of deception to cause you to err. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things, commit the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Notice every time there is witchcraft, you see that there is deviation from the truth. There is disobedience in it. What is witchcraft? I wrote here. To cause you to think, to act, and to talk in error using the tool of deception. What is witchcraft again? To cause you to think, to cause you to act, and to cause you to talk in error 
using the tool of deception. Second Peter chapter 2, we'll read from verse 1 and 2. Second Peter chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. Very quickly. But there are false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Last verse, verse 2. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of. This is the character of witchcraft. The practice of witchcraft does not have to do with some crude African type activity. Even though there is an expression of it like that. But principally, engaging the tool of deception to cause you to think, to act, and to speak in ways that are inconsistent with God's ways is witchcraft. So the first demonic influence that Satan has over men, if allowed, is witchcraft. Number two, are you ready? The second is called manipulation and control of your mind. Manipulation and control of your mind. Please start that one. Because this is where, even when you are saved, I'm going to be answering the question whether the Christians can be possessed or not. Manipulation and control of your mind. This one is principally in the realm of the mind. Your mind containing your will, your emotions, and your intellect. Matthew chapter 16 from verse 22 and 23. Matthew 16, 22 and 23. Remember the discussion between Jesus and Peter? Jesus was talking about his dying. And the Bible says Peter took him. Who took him? Peter. One of the chief disciples of Jesus. He took him and began to rebuke him. Saying, be it far from thee, Lord. This shall not happen to you. 23. But he turned, he being Jesus, and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou serverest not the things that be of God and those that be of men. You want to find the account that he said, Satan has desired to sift you, go to Luke 22. We'll read 31 and 32. Synoptic account, same message. The Lord said, Luke 22, 31 and 32. The Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. 32. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Satan came to manipulate the compassion, like I've taught you, of Peter to stop Jesus from dying. Jesus was talking about his death. And to Peter, he did not know. This was a man who he was not longer, I mean, that he had said, I know who thou art. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Next moment, Jesus is telling him, get thee behind me, Satan. Number three, the third level of satanic influence. The third level of satanic influence over the saints is called possession or over men, really. Possession. This talks of complete influence and control of your spirit, mind, and body. Possession. Complete influence and control. Of your spirit, your mind, and your body. Demons can use, Satan can use witchcraft. Next level, manipulation and control of your mind. Third level, complete possession. Influence and control of your spirit, your mind, your mental faculties, and your body. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. 
And they came over to the other side of the sea, into the country of the gatherings. Let's follow closely now. He's teaching us that it is possible for demons to completely possess a man. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tomb. Are you seeing the character of that man now? And no man could bind him. Unusual power. No, not with chains. Verse 4. Because that when he had often, when he had been often bound with fetters and chains, the chains had been plucked asunder by him. Can a normal man easily do that? You see that now. And the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, doing what? Crying and cutting himself with stones. This is the standard character of demonic possession. That this man is hurting himself with stones and yet he cannot stop because his spirit, his mental faculties and sadly his body is under total control and influence of such a spirit. When Jesus saw, when he saw Jesus afar off, we're about to learn some lessons now, he ran and worshipped him. I ask you again, does Satan know that Jesus is Lord? He's about to negotiate a deal because when he saw Jesus, he knew. That means every time demons see people who understand their authority, they know. He saw Jesus and he knew. And he came and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high? Look at that kind of intelligence. I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Do you know what this means? I use the Father's authority that you submit to to plead with you. I know you are obedient to the Father. And remember, He is kind and He is loving. Don't torment us. Look at Satan. For Jesus had said, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Now I love Jesus. And He asked him, What is your name? And the man answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he should not send them away from the country. Are you seeing now? Territorial construct of these spirits. That means, okay, since we are going to leave the man, it looks like that negotiation is not working. Please, do us a favor. Can you command that we just come out of him and look for someone within the territory? Because based on our structure, this is our territory. Verse 11. Now there was nigh unto the mountain a great herd of swine feeding. And the devils besought him and said, I will teach you why demons want bodies. Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. Do you know what lesson? Hold on, please go back. Go back. Go back to verse 12. How many of you know that Gadara had so many human beings? And yet the demons are begging. It took us a long time to prepare this body to host us. I thought they would live and just enter any body. Satan does not have that kind of power to just enter anyhow. It takes a lot. There are processes. He is telling them that even though there are men, as it is right now, the urgency of wanting a body, when are we going to meet a man, deceive him, manipulate him until we gain entrance? Let us go to peaks. Why will Satan have men scattered in the, in the Decapolis and yet look for one man? Because there are rules of engagement. I told you, even Jesus knocks to enter your life. So when you see it look like Satan can just get into any life anyhow, it is a lie. From Adam and Eve and from this madman. The demons are pleading. We want to leave. But there are rules of engagement. We are not just going to enter anybody. And remember, these guys that he's afraid of entering are not born again. Because Jesus had not died. And yet he still could not enter them. 
send us to peaks that we may enter into them. 13. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down the steep. Can you see that exactly what was happening to the man before was now happening to the pigs? So it was not the bodies, it was the influences that was behind it. Are we together now? The Bible says they ran down to a steep place. There were about 2,000. Look at how that man was suffering. What came out from him entered 2,000 pigs. And all of them could not control themselves. Yet one man was carrying that. Imagine the pain that that man was going through. Let's finish. We're reading to 16. 14 now. Verse 14. And they that fed the swine, and they that fed the swine fled, and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what was that that was done. Verse 15. And when they come to Jesus, they see that the man who was possessed with the devil and had a legion, they saw him sitting and clothed. And in his right mind, we discussed that last week, that immediately after the deliverance, you thought the man would go away. But the next thing that happened after deliverance was that he was with Jesus. He did not leave Jesus. Next week we'll be looking at the three levels of deliverance. That number one, the spirit influences were cast. Number two, he was with Jesus. He remained with Jesus. And he sat down there. And his remaining with Jesus was doing something to his mind. His right mind. And they were afraid. Last verse. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil. And also concerning the swine. Now, can a Christian be possessed with demons? The answer is no. A Christian cannot be possessed with demons. The reason is because of the very character of the administration of eternal life. That eternal life demands that you are joined to Christ. And the Bible says, he that is joined to Christ is one spirit. But this is the balance. Just because a Christian cannot be possessed does not mean Satan does not have an activity that a believer can be a victim of. The first two that I listed, witchcraft and manipulation and control, it does not matter how born again that believer is. The cure for witchcraft and the cure for manipulation and control is not just being born again. It's putting on the whole armor of God. I will teach you that one. Are you seeing now? There are many, many believers that are saved and yet will be victims of this. Why? Ephesians 4.18 Having their understanding darkened. Not having their salvation lost. Having their understanding darkened. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. A Christian cannot be possessed, but he can be demonized, manipulated, and controlled at the solical realm. Absolutely. Here is where we need to balance in the body of Christ. And most of you know that I love the body of Christ. I'm sent to the body of Christ. But let us not give the devil the authorization to prey on our ignorance. Satan came to Jesus, holy Jesus, righteous Jesus, blameless Jesus. He came to him, spoke with him. He took, it is written, it did not take Jesus being the word to be saved. It didn't take Jesus being born of the word to be saved from that deception. It took him having knowledge and replying back, it is written and get thee behind me. Two things that saved Jesus. It is written and get thee behind me. Understanding of scripture and understanding of authority. Are we learning now? So the whole idea that just because you are saved, automatically, Satan has nothing to do with your life. It's a lie. It's not true. I can tell you by the authority of scripture. It is not true. 
the disciples, the apostles, they continue to tell you how that Satan would come and attempt to challenge them, challenge their minds, challenge their body, and they continue to stand with the operation of the word of God. When Jesus entered the temple and preached and rebuked spirits, the people did not show any evidence that they had any spirit at work in them. It was when he gave the command. Hallelujah. Three levels of satanic influences. Witchcraft through deception, manipulation and control, largely in the realm of your mind, and then complete possession, influencing your spirit, influencing your mind, and influencing your body. Now, having put down all of these things in our discussion, what then is deliverance? What is deliverance? Exodus chapter 3 from verse 7 and 8. What exactly is deliverance? And the Lord said, Exodus chapter 3 from verse 7 and 8, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Please read verse 8 with me. Ready? Read. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto a place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. I am come down to deliver them. Take note. To take them out and to bring them in to take them out and to bring them in scripture number two colossians chapter one from verse 13 and 14 colossians chapter one from verse 13 and 14 who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son verse 14 in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Recall that I've taught you here that there are two dimensions when it has to do with the dealings of God and man. Number one, there is the prophetic dimension, realities from God's standpoint. That every time God speaks, he speaks from a realm that is finished. And number two, there is the experiential manifestation of that which God intended happening in time. Two dimensions. When you read the Bible, you will see God establish certain things. For instance, none shall say in Zion, I am sick. For instance, we've been delivered. Not, we have been deli not there is deliverance going on. We are delivered. It is our assignment to make that which was spoken become manifest. Are we together now? You have to understand this. Write this down, please. What is deliverance? I was going through the notes that I made last time I was doing Mystery of Deliverance, and I saw this definition. I worked on it a bit, but it's a powerful definition. Listen carefully. Generally speaking, the word deliverance connotes rescue or freedom from bondage, Danger and evil. Generally speaking, the word deliverance connotes rescue or freedom from bondage, danger, and evil. Generally speaking, this is just a general idea. The word deliverance connotes rescue or freedom from bondage, from danger, and from evil. Deliverance also means salvation. Deliverance also means salvation. Generally speaking, deliverance connotes rescue or freedom from bondage, danger, evil. Let me define deliverance proper now. Deliverance, I wrote here, is the scriptural strategy 
Deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing. I will take it very slowly because I don't want you to miss anything here. As long as it is obtain grace to write it, there is victory in that sentence. Are we together? Deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ. Let me stop there so you write. Deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and destiny of the believer. Deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ. The victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demonic forces. Come on. Over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and destiny of the believer. Establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and destiny of the believer. If we are together, say Amen. amen. Now listen as I read it without breaking. You've been writing. I want you to hear now. Deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially manifesting Establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and destiny of the believer. Write this down. Deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare. Please don't be tired of writing. Deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare. For the believer in Christ, deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer in Christ is about establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it. Deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer in Christ is about establishing, underline establishing, and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it. Second Corinthians 2 and verse 4. That means deliverance, and then it extends to spiritual warfare. For the believer in Christ, our idea of deliverance is not fighting for victory. It's engaging the systems that establish and manifest the victory that has been wrought in Christ. Do you understand this now? It's important to get this definition. It will mean the world as far as challenging and contending for that which Christ has given you is concerned. Because there are ideas about deliverance that connotes fighting Satan. So you are not sure whether you win. You just fight and watch as it happens. That is not scriptural. That will be an endless struggle in ignorance until you are defeated. For the believer, our idea of deliverance is engaging the systems and the forces of victory given to us in Christ to establish and manifest our victory in Christ over Satan, over demons, principalities and powers. 2 Corinthians 2.14 2 Corinthians 2, 14, 1, 4. Do we have that? Now thanks be unto God. Let's read together. Now thanks be unto God, which caused us to triumph, where? In Christ. Not by our ability, in Christ. And make it manifest, that's right, the savor of this knowledge by us in every place. Now, thanks be to God. Who causes us to triumph? 
we triumph. But there is one who causes us to triumph. The Bible calls him Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Let's read together again. Ready? One to read. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Shout Amen. amen. But thanks be to God, which giveth us, giveth us the victory. So when it has to do with deliverance, your concern is not fighting Satan. Your concern is not fighting demons. Your concern is not fighting causes. Your concern is not fighting yokes. Are we together? Your concern is taking advantage of what we call the weapons of victory that have been given to you in Christ. We are going to deal with the weapons. What are they? Because the Bible says to put the whole armor of God. But there are weapons of victory that have been given to us. Weapon number one, the power of the word. Weapon number two, the power of the blood. Weapon number three, the power of the name. Given to us. Hmm. The power of the word. We'll deal with, with that when we go into administering deliverance. The power of the word. The power of the blood, the power of the name. All of them are not doing the same thing. No. Deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and the destiny of the believer. Deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer is not is about establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it. We are not fighting for it. We have it already. But now our assignment is to know how to engage it to make it manifest. The Bible says right from the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. But Jesus had to come physically and engage the tool of being a man, walking in the earth, walk, dying, shedding his blood, going to Hades, resurrecting to make that which was finished become manifest today. Hallelujah. Are you learning now? Before we pray, let me end tonight's discussion by teaching you something very powerful. Access points. Access points. Hmm. That means, by what access points does Satan and demons get into the life of the believer or find a place in their minds, their bodies. Listen, by the privilege of God's grace, I have studied my Bible from cover to cover and by the privilege of God's grace, I've had the honor of listening to people who really understand this subject. I have studied my Bible and I found out as complicated as Satan causes, yokes, altars, foundations, ancestry and all these ills are there are only three access points that satan has to man and even the believer are you ready now i may not go into in depth of detail we'll leave that one for next week because i want us to take the remaining time and pray for all the sessions we have some time to pray because there are people who as you are hearing now god is granting you that light and you are seeing that the strength of satan is in my cooperating with him through ignorance, through, through deception. He will roar like a lion and act as if he will eat you out. When he does, ask him why he did not enter Eve and Adam immediately. Ask him why when the spirits left the madman, they did not enter another man. 
He should give you the explanation. Where did he keep his power that he could not simply pick any man? Just because you come from a village where there is that cause does not mean you can allow Satan to just manipulate you like that. Now listen carefully. You are about to learn something that is very, very powerful. Access points. Please write. Are you ready? There are three biblical access points. Number one, covenants. Aha, covenants. Write it down. The first access point that gives Satan legitimate access to the lives of men, sadly including believers, covenants. Please just write it. Number two, ignorance. Ignorance. Number three, disobedience. These are the three biblical access points and the only access points that Satan has. If you ever find Satan manipulating a life, a destiny, a region, a family, I don't care how long, I don't care how great. Believe me when I tell you, it is one or more or all of these access points. Number one, covenants. Number two, disobedience, ignorance. Number three, of the three, the most effective for Satan is covenants. Do you know why? Because covenants have a transgenerational implication. Covenants, ignorance, and disobedience are all interrelated. But covenants seem to be powerful because it is on legal basis. Let me touch on covenants. The idea of covenant was not invented by Satan. The idea of covenant was invented by God. It was God's own intelligence to manage the inconsistencies and to manage the emotional frailty of man. Listen carefully. God gave man a will. And the fallen man, by his design, is frail with several emotional vacillations. And if man is going to partner with God sustainably, there has to be a way of binding man that is greater than his emotions. Covenants. Because covenant is a non-emotional activity. That means you can't just decide to change it. Anything God wants to do with man that he wants to take seriously, he will tie a covenant to it. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone forth from my lips. You know, believers play with the idea of covenants, and you will see that everything God takes seriously, marriage, he took it seriously, and he tied it to a covenant. Do you know why? Because he knows under normal circumstances, the couple can run away by the next day. So he put covenant, a non-emotional binding, so that it's not about what you feel or you don't feel. There is an influence that is higher than your emotional vacillations. Salvation is a covenant. Whosoever believes him, if not, there are people who can be so bad, they don't deserve to be saved. However, because it is a covenant, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord, it does not matter who that person is. Provided you confess with your heart. Let me tell you, if you are given the keys for salvation, there are people whose level of evil, if you see them, you will tell them, don't near this altar. However, because it is a covenant, whosoever believes in him, even if you are Saul, even if you are Paul, whosoever, 
The only personalities that salvation does not capture are fallen angels. Salvation is not for angels and non-human spirits. I'll be teaching you the rules of engagement. That is why Satan and demons cannot be forgiven. Mm -mm. Salvation is for men. Salvation is for men. The benefit of salvation extends to creation. But animals don't have to give their life to Jesus. They are already under the dominion of man. The same way when Eve ate, nothing happened till Adam ate. That is the same way. What animals and plants do does not matter, provided the man in control is still in touch with God. Are you seeing that now? Animals and seas and all of this only are harsh to man because man had willfully given his authority to Satan. I pray you're getting what I'm teaching you. Covenants are very powerful. Everything that God wants to do with you, if he wants to take you seriously, there will be covenants. Because by the frail nature of men, that's why you hear that there are relationships called covenant relationships. Non-emotional. Is that true? When you get a job, watch this. It may not be called covenant, but there is something given to you called an employment letter. Is that true? It clearly spells the terms. You are going to be giving 500,000 every month. They calculate it for you per annum. You have 30 days, one month leave. You can spread it three or four times. They give you all of those things and then you sign. The signing is a declaration of your consent. That if for any reason I violate these terms, is that true? The company has a right to punish me based on their modus operandi. And that if I comply with these terms, I have a right to take the company to court for defaulting. Covenants. Say covenants. That is the reason why when Satan came to our forefathers, he did not suggest. He called them and said, you want me to help you? Let us have an agreement. Now you see, an altar is simply a system of authorization. Again, we'll discuss that next week. When we talk about altars, an altar, because you will see that what we call the mercy seat in heaven, in fact, God himself sits, his throne is an altar. A system of authorization. Let us therefore come before the throne of grace that we may obtain from that throne he literally sits on an altar. An altar is a system of authorization. The assignment of an altar is to insist that the terms of a covenant remain binding. Even when those who initiated it are no more. An altar is the spiritual system that supervises compliance to covenants. There is no true covenant until there is an altar and that altar is built and ratified with blood so that even though our forefathers have long gone even though those who brought all kinds of demonic things have long gone but the altars that represent the witness are still there so after 50 years 100 years the spirits have legitimate access to the people within that region and every time you want to accuse them, they go back and make reference. The altar remains a witness. I am not an illegal occupant in this land. I was willfully invited and your forefathers, and you were in the loins of your forefathers. That is the reason why the sacrament of the communion and the sacrament of baptisms, these are covenant type things too. How did you get into Christ? It was by the mystery of that covenant. Drink this. This is my blood of the new covenant. Do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. Are we together now? Watch this. When the angel of death was going to pass over Egypt, remember the condition for salvation was not your personal righteousness, whether you are a Jew or not. Just find a house. The house did not have emotions. Provided there is blood on the house, whoever is in it, you are saved. But when you are in that house, even though you are saved, there will still be a difference. 
If you wanted to become a Jew there, you have to submit yourself to circumcision. However, as far as safety from the angel of death is concerned, the angel does not see men. He's looking for the blood. You know why? Because the angel of death was mandated to kill everybody. And like we say in theology, when he came to some homes, he found them already dead. Because the blood is a sign that the death that should happen has happened. So the angel of death will pass. As far as the angel of death is concerned, he killed everybody. It's only that when he came, some people, someone had helped him kill the ones in the house. So he moves to the house where there is no blood and creates blood there. Listen, that is the same way when a covenant has been ratified by blood, an authorization is given that everybody who comes from this region, this spirit, when you see them, have no fear. Through ancestry, through bloodline, or through their personal activities, they have brought themselves to that point. That is the reason why when you are dealing with issues of legal access, you do not cast it in Jesus' name. It is the blood that speaks. There are rules of engagement. Look at me. As powerful as God is, He did not cast sin out of man. You would think God would look at man and say, I am God, I am creator. Man, be free. No. When he gave Satan the authority, it was willful. And it would take the blood. This is why a lot of believers just pray and say it is done. And it is not done. Because they do not understand the power of the covenant that brought them that trouble. Go and read the history of many lands. You will hear that they bury human beings. They bury people alive. Do you know the power of blood and the power? Human beings were the zenith of God's creation. And you will not just carelessly say, I don't believe. I force my mind to think right. You are joking. I believe in miracles. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe the sick can be healed. I believe lives can change. I believe that what is not can become. In the twinkling of an eye, I believe it. Otherwise, we are gathered here for a waste of time. I really believe it. Ah! I believe it. I believe that something that is missing can return back. Everything is alive. I believe. I am a miracle myself. I'm not just a recipient of miracles. I am a miracle. This man that stands before you is a real miracle. So I know that miracles are real. Please don't get used to pain. Don't get used to the tragedies of life. Expect that God can invade this life. Let me tell you a miracle that happened to me. We were in Lagos for young and yielded, and then I ministered. I ministered in the church that we always use their auditorium, and something strange happened. While I was counseling, a man came who, um, of course, I'm sure he could understand English, but he felt comfortable speaking in Yoruba. And he came and sat close to me and started talking in Yoruba. You know, just assumed. And now he was an elderly man. This is something that happened last week. I didn't know. I said, now how do I respectfully tell this man, sorry, sir, I'm not exactly Yoruba. And the guy was talking to me. And the next thing that happened was I started understanding exactly what he was saying. The, the, this is not a lie. The same way you preach and someone is interpreting. I was hearing what he was saying. Then I was responding to him in English. And then he would tick the first one. Tick the second one. We were done and I prayed for him. Immediately I, I finished praying for him. That was it. You, I will not be able to hear anything again. Where have you kept God? Oh. Where have you kept God? Where have we reduced the God of heaven to? Please listen, listen, listen. Listen. Man himself is a miracle. Everything happens on earth. It's just that we don't take our time to ponder. I believe in the supernatural. It is the way God reaches men. What is not?
becomes. That means it is possible for someone who has no business calling you to call you. Why should you wonder? It is the Lord's doing. Let it only be marvelous in your eyes. While you are listening to me, let the Holy Ghost speak to you. Take away the unbelief. Dear ones, take away the unbelief. There is a God that sits in heaven. That God is not a man. God is not an archangel. God is not Angel Michael. He's not a senior brother to the angels. He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. Are we together? supernatural a generation that does not believe the supernatural is the generation that will truly miss God experientially Hi. we need to trust God for grace this is one of the benefits of things like praying in the spirit to take you out of this mundane realm of carnality where we always we believe that things must happen by science alone no sir there is a God in heaven. By this time tomorrow, there is a God in heaven. The rod of Aaron that did not have a root to the earth can still bring forth fruit. It is true. This has been my contemplation, so not just today. It's been in my heart. You can, you can see the passion with which I'm communicating. A generation is losing the essence of the reality of the power of God. The ministry of the anointing is gradually being lost. And when I say the ministry of the anointing, I'm not talking of flying up and down, falling down. The ability to demonstrate the existence of God who sits in the heaven. This has nothing to do with being an apostle or a prophet. It's how far God can reach to men. For I spoke a word, you see. You have been so, so good to me. I don't know the song, but I like the song. Part of the song I love. is a demonstration of God's love he knows that you already got born again at 40 when will you know God to become great already you are late you are late already so the dimension of his supernatural can bring mercy can bring favor jump and accelerate your life and push you forward otherwise why is he God please believe what I'm saying God knows that he called you into ministry and he knows the people he's sending you to. He knows the stubbornness in their heart that until they see miraculous signs, they won't come. So he, listen, he's not going to send you just with a sermon. No. How then will you demonstrate and defend what he sent you? Moses said, what will, who will I tell Pharaoh sent me? power of God let us be a generation that can believe the power of God that when God says I can lift you you believe it when God says I can anoint you you believe it 
when God says I can turn your life around you believe it please hear me what more do you need to see to know that natural things don't count very much in this realm you have to be outstanding by an agency that is not human John 4 48 except ye see miraculous signs you will not believe Jesus himself said it except you see it there is a demonstration of the hand and the might of God that must rest upon us and rest upon our generation why will you write your prayer request if it will not be answered why should you travel I'm aware that some of us have been here right a number of people that I minister to in Abuja followed me here there are people who have come from all over there's a pastor you're the one who came from Ukraine from Ukraine all the way for heaven's sake why will you come and watch a man am I a, a comedian this is not an amusement park oh there is a God that sits in heaven please hear me there is a God that sits in heaven that can speak that can lift that can turn a man's life around shake that unbelief shake that unbelief get it out of your life and believe that God is able to turn a man's life around oh the overwhelming never tell you one of the major things that I know God is going to be doing tonight is healing the sick there are mysterious diseases that are coming and latching upon people you see people dying for diseases and sicknesses with no name it's, it's like headache but it's not headache it's like chest pain but it's not chest pain it's like asthma but it's not asthma it's like a lump but it's not a lump. It's like a growth, but it's not a growth. Whatever it is, we know it's an oppression of the devil. Please sit down. Let me finish up and then we'll pray. So by the ministry of the anointing, number two, how blessings manifest. The second dimension is by the impartation of wisdom and understanding. The second way that the word becomes flesh is that the Lord by his spirit will impart upon a man the spirit of wisdom and understanding. There are certain results that don't need the supernatural as it were. They just need an awareness of the laws of God and the fortitude to walk in accordance with those principles. There are dimensions that doesn't just need an event. The power of God is coming on two people outside. Two people outside. Please bring them here. Two people outside. I started sensing a very mighty grace. Ah, tonight will be a great night of impartation. Please bring them here. Just listen to the word, the Lord will do a quick work. Two people, I see like rain. The rain of the Spirit is about to be drenched. For I spoke a word. Ali Baru Please bring them.
the Lord is saying I'm shifting you both of you that you are entering a dimension of the favor of God this is what I'm seeing you came here to contact the grace that will bring you into a strange realm of favor and I declare by the spirit of grace that everything that is not of the Christ over your lives and destinies this is miracle service it must bow to the name and the Lordship of Jesus Shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming out to me. three and then we'll pray the third way that the word becomes flesh that possibilities get to you is through the ministry of men 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 Men are God's conduits. They communicate possibilities. Most of the favor that you need is already in the hands of a man. You need the ministry of men. I don't just mean the prophetic ministry of men. You need the giving ministry of men. You need the lifting ministry of men. You need the endorsing ministry of men. Please tonight, let your expectation be high. God will not disappoint you. The word becomes flesh. The word becomes a testimony. When the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon that situation, the word becomes a testimony when you are given spiritual illumination, wisdom, understanding, the fortitude to comprehend spiritual things, then the word becomes flesh. When men are introduced in your life, men are carriers of possibilities, not just spiritual possibilities. There are men that have the wealth to give you. There are men that have the endorsement, the leverage, their credibility is an asset. They can bring it upon your life and turn your life Everything that we seek for in this place tonight comes under these three categories. There are matters that only the anointing can solve tonight. There are matters that the quickening of the spirit, providing illumination, will channel you to solve. But there are things that men, 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 given by God. Listen, when the man at Get Beautiful met Peter and John, he didn't say, such as in, is in heaven. He said, such as I have. There are things men have. Please hear me. There are things that men have. And they can give it. There are things that men have. And they can give it. A man can have a car and give you the key to the car. A man can have. But you see, the things that men have, real blessings are not physical. When a man gives you anything physical, it's not really a blessing. It's just a donation. Real blessings are spiritual. All the sons of Abraham, he gave them physical gifts. But to Isaac, he gave him the blessing. 
Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we are going to do a quick walk tonight. But I trust God to heal the sick. This, 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 there is a grace today to, to damage all kinds of infirmity. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all. Healing all. They that were oppressed of the devil. Tonight, you will lift up that report, that threat that stands before the God of heaven. There are many of us here, I believe, who are in ministry. We may not exactly have needs. Tonight is also a night of impartation. Listen, an impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. It can be transferred. You can carry something back that you did not come with. You can carry a grace that while you were in the car coming, it was not yet in your life. And your results will show what has been introduced in your life. Are we together? Please rise up, lift up your voice in one minute and declare, Lord, I believe. I believe. I'm a believer tonight. Everywhere, outside, inside, pray. Diligent is the rewarder, the healer, the lifter. I want to pray. Please listen. Listen. Please don't get used to the ritual of what is done here. It is not just a ritual to pray, have people fall under the anointing. Be sensitive to what God is doing everywhere. But be sensitive to what he is doing in you, around you. Be sensitive to the graces you are receiving. Be sensitive to the prophecy that is coming upon you. Be sensitive to the things that are changing. Be sensitive to the mantles that are resting upon you. Be sensitive to what is happening. Be sensitive to the speakings of the Spirit. So I, I don't want you to get used to the, the, the ritual. Oh, you are about to see people in front. No, 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 no. Let your heart be open. There is a God in heaven and he's the lifter of men. Please hear me. You are a visitor here coming. You are welcome. We'll acknowledge you later on. But please, insist that you did not waste your time to come for nothing. Please, I know you have heard and I know you came for an experience. Many of us have inconvenienced ourselves not under the best of conditions to be here. Please don't waste your stay. Let your heart be open to carry something tangible. Hallelujah. Satan is behind many predicaments of our lives. Satan is behind many of the ills that continue to happen. Please let me have your attention because I want to pray now. And the power of God, listen please, as I begin to pray, there are people here, you see, God may not necessarily, don't worry, it's okay, excuse me, that's all right, leave the seats please. There are people here who are sincere people, even believers, but your life and destiny is under the strange influence of the operation of darkness. The Bible says many things happen in Mount Zion. And one of it is that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Please, i like you to believe. This is no ordinary prayer. Remember, it is the Spirit and the Bride that is talking. 
you are only seeing the bride but it's the spirit and the bride i'm about to pray and i want you to please believe because everything that does not represent christ must go today now A few weeks ago, I had an encounter and the Holy Spirit told me you are about to experience a new lifting in your authority in the Spirit. Listen, please. This is the first time I'll be sharing it. And I saw, every time I see it, this is what I see. I see like a badge in the Spirit, a promotion. And the, the Lord said, I will put power upon your lips in another dimension that as you declare, you will see it happen. It's, this thing is a grace. It's a grace. It is not every time a man declares with power. There are times that you declare with authority. It's an office. Let me pray. Thank you, Jesus. There is a very serious deliverance that is about to happen. And please, I want you to bring the people in front. I'm seeing yokes. I'm telling you, I'm seeing real bondages. God has anointed this place to be a place of liberty. Right now I declare by the spirit of the Christ. And I decree and declare. That in the name of Jesus. At the count of three I want you to shout that name that is above every other name. And except God is not God. Any planting that is not of the Christ. Over your life and your destiny. I speak by the grace of God almighty that he must let you go now one two three shout Jesus bring them out bring them out in the name of Jesus I command devils I command spirits yokes that have tied down the destinies of men be gone now by the spirit of the Christ the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit go now release every destiny 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 release every destiny, release every destiny. I decree and declare the Bible says, even the captives, the lawful captives, shall be delivered. Therefore, I declare that every legal access upon which the devil is holding on to anyone's destiny, right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost, be delivered now. 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 I command closed doors be open closed doors be open right now be open closed by the hand of darkness I declare be open be open now be open now be open now oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh hey, hey. Yahweh Oh yeah yeah hey. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh Yahweh hey. Yahweh Yahweh Oh yeah yeah 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 Oh yeah y
Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me chains over people's heads. I decree and declare anyone here under any kind of yoke at the count of three inside outside online i want you to shout that name again it's not a ritual done out of unbelief there is force and power in the name one two three every orchestration go now be loose now be loose now In the name of Jesus, be loose by the authority of Jesus. By the authority of Jesus. By the authority of Jesus. The Lord is showing me people who have been at the same level for many years. There is nothing you do in time that moves you forward. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing fire just rising from my limbs. I'm about to pray that prayer. Anyone who has been kept at the same position right now by the anointing of the spirit, I declare that limitation broken now. Broken now. Help them. Broken now. Broken now. Broken now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Right away, I want to pray against barrenness. I'm sensing the grace. Don't wait till you are married. If there is anyone here by the Spirit of God, by whatever means, your womb has been closed by the authority of heaven. I declare right now, I'm seeing the anointing coming on a number of people. Married or unmarried, let that womb be open now. Be open now. Be open now. I tell you the anointing of God is coming on people whether you are married or not some of you are standing in for your loved ones I declare again womb be open now be open now be open now be open now I command every devil. Ah, I'm seeing such. I'm still seeing people's feet tied like a chain around the feet of people. Right now, I decree and declare every chain, Makatoska Barakata, holding anyone now. In the name of Jesus, I break those chains now. 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 Hallelujah. If you have any abdominal pain, lay your hands right now. Lay your hands just on your stomach. Any kind of abdominal pain. Doesn't matter whether it's a fibroid, doesn't matter whatever. Just lay your hands here right now. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare. Right now, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is coming upon your stomach area. And in the name of Jesus, let there be a miracle right now. Let there be a miracle right now. I'm seeing a number in the realm of the Spirit 21. And the Lord is saying an anointing is coming on those people. And that grace is for direction. You are at a point in your life where you are confused. You honestly don't know what to do. But right now I stretch my hands. 21. I see it in the realm of the spirit. Right now let the anointing of the spirit bring in direction. Ending confusion. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Direction. Direction direction in ministry direction in business direction geographic direction receive it in the name of jesus
I want to pray for speed. I'm going to continue praying for speed until I see it manifest. Now, please hear me. Because of what happens when I pray for speed, the ushers are limited. Make sure that you protect anyone because people will start running up and down. That grace for speed must find expression. I will continue to pray it until you leave your current level. I stretch my hands by the privilege of God's grace and I declare, I don't know what has caused delay, but the mantle that commands speed right now at the count of three, Koinonia, hear me. One, two, three, receive speed. Speed, speed, speed in your destiny. Speed. Do in one month what one year could not do. Do in one month what five years could not do. Do in one month in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're trying to conserve time. There is a lot to do. Who is Janet? I'm hearing a name, Janet. 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 All those who are in front under the anointing here, I command the devils that have oppressed you. This is the house of God. Right now at the count of three, release them. Release everything you have tied down. One two three go go now every strange spirit go now go now now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty janet i'm hearing a name janet hold on please don't don't be rowdy just relax stand up my dear that lady on green stand up where are you coming from Huh? You are from Kaduna State. Relax, calm down. I want to pray for you. Listen, God is not just calling names at random. I want to pray for you. You can expect that there will be so many genets. The power of God is coming on one of you right now. One of you, as I'm, I'm seeing an anointing coming on one of you right now. It's, it's not something you can stand. The power of God. We are going to have to do a quick work because we want to take out time and minister to the sick. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare. There's one of you, the anointing of the Spirit. Let's just walk that instruction first. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare on all of you. I may not have time to prophesy one by one, but every barrier that stands between you and the next level, I declare, let it go now. I curse it by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The power of God is coming on a lady. Just where this, my brothers, are standing. Bring that person. Just this row. I'm seeing a cloud. Just right here. Right now as I'm speaking. The anointing of the Spirit is coming on one person there. Please bring the person. Is a lady, bring her. Janet, I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hi. This is an instruction God is giving me. There is a family, I'm seeing the family. It's a whole pattern. Nobody marries. No matter what happens. I'm about to pray. The power of God is coming on that one person for the sake of the family. Please, I want you to believe and receive. I declare that marital delay. This is the instruction God is giving me. Break now. Break now. Break now. Break now. The Lord is opening my eyes. 
and in the realm of the spirit i'm seeing the map of benway state an anointing is coming right now on benway god is bringing a miracle i release my i stretch my hands and i declare a miracle right now it's a sign and a wonder how god does it benway state benway state benway state i cause the workings of darkness over that territory in the name of jesus be free in the name of Jesus. The Lord is taking me to a neighboring state. I'm literally seeing myself in Kogi state. And the Lord is saying he's breaking witchcraft. I don't know who are those who are from there. But I stretch my hands. Kogi state. May that anointing come upon anyone associated with that territory that is under the yoke of bondage. Be free now. Be free now. Kogi state. Be free now. Be free now. God does these things that men will fear him. My sister, look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Something is leaving you. This is what I'm seeing. For you and for your family members. Let that devil never return to you again. In the name of Jesus Christ. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. My hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. I'm hearing a name Agnes prophecy takes a lot of time so we'll just minimize it so that I'm hearing the name Agnes 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 I'm hearing that name please very quickly because I want to take out time and God is visiting three families at Overflow 2. Overflow 2, the overflow by the roadside. I just saw an anointing. Just like fire. Three families. Three families by the Spirit of the Living God. Agnes. Who is Agnes? You are Agnes. You are Agnes. Your sister. No, you are not here for your sister. You are here for yourself. Come. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, this spirit must let you go. There is a very violent spirit that, that is attempting to take advantage of this lady's life. I declare now by the spirit of God, the covenant and the ordinance that authorizes you in the life of this lady comes under judgment now. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that violent devil must let you go now even by the Spirit of the... There is no hiding place in the name of Jesus. There is no hiding place for the unfruitful works of darkness. I curse you by the God of heaven and I declare you must let her go alongside everything you have planted in her life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just hold her there. I'm going to hold your hand. It's a strange mystery. I'm going to hold your hand, but the person who will fall is on this rope. Bring the person for me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare 
just don't worry leave the baby the person who will fall is not this lady it's on this row like this this row right to the back in the mighty name of Jesus I declare by the spirit of the living God that everything that does not name the name of Christ right now I command it must go in the name of Jesus Christ it must go by the grace of God I set you free my dear in the name of Jesus let me pray for you father there is please don't be embarrassed we may not prophesy to everyone but there is a woman here don't be embarrassed you just had a miscarriage usually I would not ask you to come but the Lord is asking to come out who is that person please there is a Yoruba family that is under a very strange attack under a strange attack I'm praying right now I don't know where they are but I'm going to pray for you by the spirit please don't confuse the cases so that I can minister to them in the name of Jesus I pray for that family it's a Yoruba family from Quara State Yoruba family from Quara State I'm seeing it by the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ that family is here or anyone who represents that family I declare freedom right now by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus I pray for you my dear that everything that is not the planting of the Lord the hand of God is upon you and the Lord is saying in the seasons that come, you are going to start having visitations. There is a visitation that God is bringing. And that visitation is preparing you for where he is taking you to. And the Lord is saying that you'll be faithful. In the name of Jesus, I declare it so, even by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you step into that level and that dimension. You are the woman with the miscarriage. You are married. Please don't feel, I hope you are not embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed, huh? Because that's the same way you will come here and testify. Listen, God is not going to embarrass you for nothing. Are we together? Listen, let me tell you this. This is one big family and we're intelligent people. We will never come and just embarrass someone like that. If there's anything that looks embarrassing, just know that these things um, are spiritual. My dear, that young lady, go in. Come, lift your hands. God is not done with you yet. Huh? This is, this is, you would have left this girl now. She would have probably just gone like that. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, take what you put in her dream life. Let it live now. Take what you put inside her through the dream. Miscarriage. Please come. Please don't feel embarrassed. This is a family. Did I pray for you? Did I pray for you? It's all right. If I prayed for you, just go back. My dear, put your hand on your stomach. In the name of Jesus, I agree with you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Go and return with your child according to the time of life. No more miscarriage whatsoever. In the name of Jesus, you will return with child according to the time of life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, please place your hand in the name of Jesus. Return with child. Return with child in the name of Jesus. There is someone here, you are in ministry. I've not done the impartation yet, but I'm seeing an anointing come on you. And this is for your ministry. There is a level of expansion that you have been praying for. And God is about to answer that prayer. I stretch my hands. I don't know where that person is. But in the name that is above all names, may that anointing, like a mighty rushing wind, in the name of Jesus. There's someone here, God, this night, is giving you a ministry to teenagers. An anointing is coming on you, your ministry. 
will be to teenagers. I don't know where that person is, but Lord, I stretch my hands. Right now, may that mantle find the person. In the name of Jesus, I birth that ministry by the Spirit. I birth that ministry by the hand of God. Inside here, outside, I declare, in the name of Jesus, let there be a birthing. I draw from the bowels of prophecy and I declare that ministry is better tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Your sister and you, why is she here? Miscarriage? Are you married? You're sure? In the name of Jesus, place your hand there. I agree with you. Every plague of miscarriage goes now. In the name of Jesus Christ, according to the time of life, return with your child. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your sister, where is she? Abuja, tell her that she was prayed for and she should respect a miracle. In the name of Jesus, I declare. You're standing in for her, but I declare the power of God is upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are four people who are receiving the mantle for prayer and intercession. Now, I know that it's, it's, a, it's a grace we will all desire, but there are four exact people. Four exact people, some inside, some outside. Lord, I don't know where they are, but that grace, a dimension of the intercessory ministry, capacity to travail by the Spirit, In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why is she here? Come. Where are you from? Kaduna, how long have you been married? Last year. Last year. Madam, you came out here for miscarriage, but what God is dealing with is more than miscarriage, huh? We'll pray for you. Where's your husband? Here, sir. Because I'm seeing him here. Is he here? Yes, sir. Where is he? Husband, please come. Is the man here? How are you, my friend? Stand up. God is about to change your life. I don't know you. What do you do, sir? Where? I'm up in Kaduna. Sir. Kaduna, I want to pray for you. Where are you from? I'm from a district. There is a grace. Please hear me. What, what, where do you work? I work with the Alliance of Africa. There are two things I'm seeing. One, I'm seeing real estate. Number two, I'm seeing distribution. Distribution of things. Go and write them down and pray over them. This is where your money is. This is where the grace of God. If you hear what I'm telling you? You see, sometimes God will not violate your will. You can choose to do anything you do. But because of the openness of your heart, he will give you direction. The Lord is my shepherd, he says, I shall not want. So when God directs you, he will take away want and lack from you. And that's why I said this is more than just the issue of barrenness or whatever it is. Huh? We'll pray for you. And madam, I want to stop the dreams. Dreams. Huh? I have to pray for you. Sometimes you don't share them. But there are dreams that are oppressions. A lot of oppressions. I want to pray for you. This will end in your life. Amen. In the name of Amen. Jesus Christ. Sir, this is July, August, September. By October, write it down. Your life will change. Do you know what just entered you? You didn't just fall under the anointing. You see, my, my brother, the realm of the spirit, what is on you is what controls what is around you. Don't worry, I'm going to pray for you. It's the grace for favor that came on you. Amen. And I declare and I prophesy over you. 
by the Spirit of God, these three months, may your life change in a way that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, put your hand in your, on your stomach. According to the time of life, huh? in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm seeing something like a rope being loosed from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus. Listen, you will come with your wife and stand here. Look at their faces and remember them. So that the day they come and stand, is, is not to glorify a man. It is to show that God, oh, God is still alive. Huh? I lose this in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. You will return with a strange miracle. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Sir, can I talk to you please? This man. Yes, sir. Where are you coming from, sir? Kaduna. Kaduna. I don't know you. Is it alright if I pray for you? I want to pray for you. Three things. Number one, I want to pray that sickness will not take you to the grave. Amen. I'm not a prophet of doom. This is our, our prophet. I want to pray for you. That's number one. Number two, I want to pray for you that everything that is yours that has not been released, let it come to you. Does it make sense what I'm telling yes, you? Sir. Yes, sir. I will pray for you. This is one of the reasons why you are here. I want to pray. It will surprise you the way God will release all kinds of financial blessings to come to you. And then number three, there is a man from Lagos that God is going to connect you with. God is going to use that man to turn your life around. I don't know what you do, but please, I want you to mark this. But the most important prophecy is sickness. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing that this thing is an attack. It will start one morning. You just stand up and they will say you are behaving as if you are talking to yourself and you are having memory loss. It's of the devil we must pray. Madam, come. God is about to change your life because you are praying and you are saying God should tell me to speak to you. Is that true? Yes, sir. Stand here. I'm, I'm standing here and I'm hearing your prayer. Yes. And you are saying the Lord should, that should visit yes, you, that you did not come from far for yes, nothing. Sir. Where did you come from? The other side. Come. Yes. Where are the other two people? <laughs> we look to Yahweh. Yahweh. I congratulate you in the name of Jesus because your life will change in a very remarkable way. Madam, I want to pray for you. Look at me. Stand up, my friend. Why by the life here? Who is sick? Madam, I want to pray for you. You see, ba, when prophecy is used well, I'm seeing this woman, your right breast. Huh? If I don't pray for you, yeah. you're going to start having what looks like a growth. <laughs> and it will later become cancer. Because oh, I'm looking at this woman. Jesus. No, don't worry, madam. I'm, don't be afraid. I'm looking at this woman on the bed and just whine. And they say, what is this? What happened to this woman? Jesus. Madam. You did not leave Adamawa State to come here to waste your time. No. Yes, I vowed a vow and prayed a prayer that never should there be a time when I will have the opportunity to minister and the people say, oh, it was just like before. Never, 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 never. That every one encounter will leave a deposit of God in your life. Hallelujah. Sir, I want to pray for you. He's, where is he coming from? Adamawa too. I need to pray. There is bad luck in your life. Come, you are a very nice man, but please stand up. Please stand up. I don't cry. Oh, yeah. oh dear. You see, but let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, sometimes people are carrying pain. Oh, you just see people laugh and praise the Lord. 
that that is a dance of faith it's just a, a joy of faith because i'm looking at this man you will not believe what this man has gone through is that true what do you do sir i'm a laundry washing with his hand yes. this is what i'm saying this man guy oh dear this man is supposed to be connected to a politician in Adamawa State. This is this man's destiny based on what the Lord is showing me. His name is Zechariah. Yes, he's the presenting Michigan Madagascar. This is what I'm telling you. Just listen, let me prophesy to you. I'm seeing that this man's destiny is supposed to be with a member, and yet he's doing. Now, I'm not saying laundry is an insult, but the way he's doing it, this is not a blessing. Um, I don't know what happened. We had a good relationship, and just of a sudden, he changed. He changed. No, he did not change. Somebody told him, huh, that they can use you to kill him, and that he has. It's not only you. I'm not a. Pro, don't go around fighting anybody, huh? That this man one day will kill him. They were saying, Honorable Kayankali, be careful. Don't allow people to just come around you like that. Who already know you? Because the enemy within is outside. That's why he lost relationship with you and cut everything away. You see, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, God reveals this thing to tell you this world we live in is not a playground. If you don't sustain spiritual intelligence, look at how may your enemies not get to the gates before you that the council of Ahitophel can turn a man's destiny and this man is not that he's using a laundry to wash him clothes like it like an animal sir you have come here for God to change your life and I'm praying for you by the God of heaven, the one who put this miracle service together. Let things change now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I declare favor upon your life. Let things turn around in the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, what do you want God to do for you? English, how does speak anyone? <laughs> Divide visitation in every area of my family. I will pray for I you. I want male children. <laughs> Oh, he you have female children. I have two. And you but want I have a male. Yes, I need male children. Mm. I want one. God should change him. That's what I, there's a reason why I shifted the mic. I don't want you to say what you're about to say loud, huh? Because one day your husband will be changed and he will hear this this miracle service message. It's true. I want to pray for you. You see, please let me advise us. It's God that gives children. And, and I don't mean to insult anyone, but please, let's be careful. This issue of give me male children, give me female children, otherwise you are not this. I mean, it's even better to come to a man of God to pray for you than to antagonize your wife or husband. There is a culture of the kingdom. Listen, when we get born again, the values, the value system of the kingdom, the spirit life must be at work in us. In as much as I know sincerely that it is beneficial to have children male and female. When our people are getting married, I pray for them that God will give them children male and female. But you cannot antagonize your wife or your husband and say, give me male children, female children. Of course, I understand I'm, I'm an African because of issues of inheritance and other things, but we have to be careful. Whatever God has not given you, you cannot have it. And if you go to the devil to have it, let me tell you, the consequence will be waiting for you. Are we together? Madam, look at me. Do you believe if I pray for you, yes, sir. you will come here with a male child? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I told you. I told you. Madam, what did you see me doing for you in a dream? Sir, you declare he lives upon my life. I should say it is done. Listen, number one, number one, God is bringing favor to your life. Number two, you will stand on this very altar with a male child. I want you to believe it. You believe that? Hold my hands. Father, please turn the life of this woman. 
in the name of Jesus. Let it please you to open her womb and give her a male child. And we agree, we receive that your husband is born again. And he's walking in the ways of God. In the name of Jesus. Madam, the Lord is going to connect you with some, a woman from Maiduguri. Where are you from? I'm from Adama. We have to get my okay, sister. I'm going to pray for you. A, a woman, she does textile and clothing. Kaya cloth. This woman will bless you in a way that it will look like it's a charm. Yeah. Believe what I'm telling you. Father, I decree and declare, surprise these people by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I bless you. God changes your life in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Mama, that mama with blue, come. Who came from Kano? From where? From Air Force Base. Air Force Base. This is your husband. Yes. What do you want God to do for him? Don't cry. You know, I preached a message here and I said, God can do it, Abby, madam. Hmm. Since 2005, no child. No messes again. Everything has gone. Madam, stand up. Please, if you are in ministry here, hear me. Reduce your public life. Go back to the secret place and get real power. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Let me repeat it, please. If you are in ministry, I say this, please. Reduce public life. Watching football. Going for marriages that you don't have any business to. I'm not saying you should not honor people. But the times that we are living in now, the problems on people, is not just sermons. People are in real trouble. We must trust God for grace to stay in the spirit until you get something genuine that can solve people's problems. 2005, how many years is that? 14 years, no child, her period ceased completely. The devil sat on it. Let me see how you have a child. Madam, don't cry. It's okay. I don't know you. I've never seen you. You can see. How will you be sitting there and then God will just call you? I want to pray for you. Madam, please hear me. I'm saying it in the open. I didn't say it in your ears. I want you to go and prepare. Huh? I'm seeing... Where is your husband? Anybody who wants to come and destroy your family by giving you something to drink, eh? In the name of Temeko, I, I, I banish them far. You hear what I'm saying? Because I'm seeing a man, I'm not, please, I love the body of Christ, but I'm seeing someone come, supposedly a prophet, but what this man is doing is not prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Six months now. I'm, I'm the only one. Six months? Yes. He has gone away. He, he just, I, I went to his office to tell him that I'm coming to Zaria today. So he now said, uh, he just looked at me. You are not divorced, <laughs> but he has just gone. He's, he just went, but you're not divorced. Uh, he's saying uh, where, they are, where they are drinking this thing, so he just left me. It may not, don't, don't be too quick to judge the man. See, let me tell you this. You see, Ba, when people go through things, be careful. When you are about to cross people and call them evil and call them this, remember that stability is according to the measure of your understanding of who God is. And there are times that even the strong get pushed to the wall. So don't be too quick. We are people of love. Don't come here and start thinking and saying, especially if you know the woman, and think the husband is this. Mm -mm. We are not here to show who is right or who is wrong. We are here to show that there is a God in heaven. Are we together? Madam, hold my hands. I command this spirit. 
in the name that is above all names to release your womb in the name of Jesus madam I speak to you first may God reconcile you back to your husband second you will take in according to the time of life your baby will stay and you will return back to the child in the mighty name of Jesus Christ every orchestration that is not of God to keep you barren and to destroy your marriage I curse it now in Jesus name see anyone here I'm, I'm praying for the ladies now then we'll pray for the sick we have to be fast but no, you don't have to come out but you are here the moment you start a relationship with a guy it becomes serious and just when he's deciding to do anything marriage it must scatter you continue to enter relationships relationships loving and unloving loving and unloving today you are in love tomorrow nonsense manufactures itself I'm praying right now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit because it's a yoke that must be destroyed I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit inside and outside anyone who is under that category by the God of heaven let the power of God come on you now to end that captivity let the power of God come on you now to end that captivity you see please give this woman her photo that woman under the anointing we have to pray um, the Lord is asking me, we are praying. I, I hope I'm not boring you. I'm not wasting your time. The Lord is showing me a family here. I may not ask you to come out. But in this family, you will never settle maritally. But you will have children. No matter how you go around it, you find out that you have children out of marriage. out of And, and it's not like the men will be there to take responsibility and take care of the children the Lord wants to deliver that family right now in the name of Jesus Christ ah. why is she coming why is she coming out the, the family is, she just came out on her own no don't worry well she, she, she's crying because of her pain it's possible she's part of that family but I'm going to pray. Whether you know it or not. You see, the thing about the anointing, I told you. Sometimes God locates people distinctly just to talk to them, to encourage and build their faith. But it doesn't matter where you are. I want to pray now that, that you cannot get married happily with a ring and settle down and have children. But the devil will manipulate that you will continue to have children. I pray right now. I don't know where they are, but in the name of Jesus Christ, Shabakato Kakes Kaparanda Gadosha Lakata, Empratose Bakatoshiata, we declare that that yoke is destroyed now. We declare that that yoke is destroyed now. That yoke is destroyed now. My dear, look at me. Come. It's your season of laughter. The Lord is saying, I should tell you. You see, let me tell you. For all the pain that you've gone through, I want you to hear me. God himself is turning your life around. Because let me remind you, even as he has reminded you that it pays to serve Jesus. Sometimes you will look foolish while you are doing it. Let me encourage someone here. It pays to serve Jesus. It may not look like he will come every day, but the day he comes, he will come with dignity and honor and lift you in a way that whoever has laughed at you will have to bend their head in shame. I'm praying for you. Hold my hands. Father, in Jesus' name, confirm your word. You have said that it's a season of laughter. I call it so and I declare that everything that stands as a blockade to your joy and laughter leaves your way now. In the name of Jesus. I prophesied by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus name someone will run out under the anointing hold the person and bring the person out that will be the last prophecy the power of God is coming on someone it's not something you can control by the anointing you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit please when that happens bring the person I need to speak to the person and then we'll pray 
for the sick right now. It's a very strange anointing and you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit. Meanwhile, let this lady come. My dear, hold my hands. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus. I'm rebuking something you don't know anything about. But in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, it goes now over by the grace of God. There are two ladies here. Only married men look for you. A, a responsible, godly gentleman will never seem to be interested in you. But when you find a married man, sometimes with children, that's the one that will come to you. I'm praying. I know there may be many people, but these are two people in the name that is above all names. I declare right now, whatever is on you that continues to compel married men, kapoush kalibra atasubati katea, garu sekete barato shadekata, Shaproske paru kapa, embregete shali karus kaparuta, emprakato segata. In the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit now. I curse so something is burning here. I curse that spirit now. I curse that devil now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be embarrassed, but I see the spirit of lust on this lady. I stretch my hands. Let that devil leave you now. That a man cannot come and pass this lady quietly and successfully. There's something that must continue to draw. In the name of Jesus, by the spirit of the living God, I curse that spirit. And I declare it must let you go now. It must release you now. By the God of heaven, I declare be free from that spirit right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're going to pray for the sick. Our time is gone, but we have to do this very fast. And like I said, please, please listen. All the people who will be praying for you, I just want you to believe um, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three, if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, please not standing for anybody. And aside from those who have prayed for, if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, then join the prayer line here. I want to pray for you myself. Just the fruit of the womb. Are we together? Now, of course, all who are here, you can come for your normal prayer. But particularly, if you, are, if you came here trusting God for the fruit of the womb, this, this fruit of the womb issue is becoming a serious issue. And we need to deal with it once and for all. Now, we're going to do this fast. All the people ministering to you will do it very, very fast and pray for you. While you are doing that, please, how many of us came with our prayer requests? For those of us who are visitors, there's still room for you. You can quickly pen down your request and wave it. Ushers will be moving around to collect PR. Please help them and let's just make this very fast and make this snappy. But overflow one, um, overflow two, overflow three and then the overflow from the building right to second equa and down let's call that overflow four okay okay there is there is overflow two b then there is overflow four please listen this is overflow one this is overflow two there is overflow two b from this place right to the roadside second equa down then there's overflow four just from the gate of overflow three then we have overflow three in the main building and then online please make your way come out and stand according to those various overflows there will be people there to minister to you right now we'll do it very fast our time is gone Please submit your prayer request. I'll be laying hands on all of them here right now. You can just wave them. There will be someone by your side. We apologize for those of you standing because your seats were foiled. 
you would soon have it back and then be back to your seat. If there are visitors, some of you who are members, clear the way for them. They can sit down temporarily, please. If you are here, you are part of us, you can allow them to sit on your seat pending when their seats will be. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please rise up on your feet. Thank you for your patience. Stretch your hands to this request. Please, if there are still requests um, that are not here, let's have them here very quickly so that we can pray. Please understand that this is not a ritual. God really answers prayers. There is a God in heaven who is in this service. This is a prophetic representation of our pain, our expectations. There may not be time to speak to everyone. There may not be time to minister to everyone as we would want to. But then I want us to agree right now. Stretch your hands and begin to pray in the spirit. As I lay my hands upon this request, we are declaring that every request here must be turned into a testimony. Abaratuska la brandege baratuske di. Abratuza dege baratusha le katos. Ente prata salagato bradike di. Karusa tapradisha. Stretch your hands and believe. We are declaring God is answering prayers now. Hallelujah. I stand upon with my bare foot on this prayer request and I declare by the Spirit of God. Even as God has instructed me, I declare that every request here by the Spirit of grace, let it be turned into your testimony. That in the name of that is above all names. There are, hold on please. There are people here, this is a death sentence. There are people here, this is an impossible situation. There are people here, God will, the person God will talk to is far. But I pray, what looks impossible, I bow my knees to the God of heaven, the one who honors me when I pray. And I convert every request here to a testimony this night. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living Lord. I decree and I declare by the spirit of faith that by this time next month you return here rejoicing. Please 
Please, don't let the devil lie to you and say it will be as it has always been. Uh-uh. 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 Every anointing that must be released towards your direction for this prayer to be answered, we release it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And every pattern that is not just an individual but is a pattern that is written here. As God is visiting you here, every other person connected to you whose request you have written here we command a miracle for them where they are in the name of jesus christ there are situations here that need the blood i declare by the mystery of the blood there are three that bear witness in the heavens the father the word and the spirit there are three that bear witness in the earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. In the name of the Lord God of heaven, by the mystery of the blood of the eternal covenant, we cancel every ordinance that sponsors continuity of this request. In the name of Jesus. And the king could not sleep in the night. And he said, bring me the chronicles. And he saw there written what Mordecai did. Whoever must remember you for this request to be granted. By the God of heaven, we open the book of remembrance tonight. Any man holding what belongs to you, which is the reason why you are writing anything here. We put pressure on them to release it now. Every family here webbed in shame and reproach. It looks like there is no dignity. The speakings of God does not seem to find expression here. I agree with you tonight by the God of heaven. Please help those under the anointing. That by the power of the Holy Ghost, shame and reproach ends this night. Shame and reproach ends this night. Shame and reproach ends this night. Therefore, I decree and declare that these Egyptians you have dropped here, by the God of heaven, may you see them no more forever. May you see them no more forever. The same way I stand upon this request, I command that you stand upon every challenge in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I speak over your life. The doors that have followed you here closed in the name of Jesus. Please believe. Let your don't be distracted. Focus on the word of God in the name of Jesus. I command those doors be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Every grounded ministry here, every grounded business, every grounded family, hear the word of the Lord. I command and I declare come back to life. Come back to life. Come back to life. Come back to life. Every helper assigned from God who has not yet paid attention to you and what you request, I stand by the God of heaven and in the name of Jesus, I compel them to attend to your matters. I compel them to attend to your matters. I compel them to attend to your matters. Everything that should have happened and has not yet happened, according to the program of God, 
you know you should have entered that level and you are not there by prophecy I push you to that level by prophecy I push you to that level listen you see let me tell you what I'm doing I'm not just speaking I'm placing something upon your life you may not see it but you leave this place and watch what happens to you then you will see things turn around let me pray for you the kind of favor that must bring acceleration to your life please receive this one in the name that is above all names may that mantle like a cloak zakatapakatos take favor take favor carry favor carry favor in the name of Jesus every area you have struggled in your life you have done what you know to do in the name of Jesus, I declare that that struggle comes to end now. Now, please listen. The anointing your destiny needs for this season. Please listen. Every season has a grace requirement. Every season. There are doors that don't just open because you stand in front of them. Yesterday's anointing will not move you to tomorrow's place i pray for you this is an impartation wherever you are i declare like the dew of heaven the kind of grace you must carry for this season let it land on your destiny now by this anointing i forbid you from being ignored in the name of jesus christ I forbid you from being ignored. I forbid you from being trivialized. No man will look down on you. They came to Jesus and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do these things except God be with him. The things that must be done through your hands in this season, for it to be said this is the Lord's doing as you are lifting your hands may a fresh unction from heaven come upon those hands for exploits anyone in ministry here I declare over you go back to your various assemblies and platforms let there be fire on your altar fire on your altar fire on the ministration let the gifts of the spirit work powerfully in the name of Jesus. We're rounding up. Let's pray over our finances. This issue of finance is bringing many people to their knees. Bringing many families to their knees. Distracting people. The time we should spend on the things of the kingdom we are focusing on money, what to eat, what to wear, house rent, building projects. It is not the will of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Ebenezer, the helper of men, I declare this month even beginning from today receive strange financial help receive strange financial help in the name of Jesus I prophesy to you strange financial help everyone under the sound of my voice trusting God for an honorable job listen there are jobs that don't have honor they are time wasters. They are devourers. I pray for you. The kind of job that represents dignity. That will honor you and help you to build your home well. May the God of heaven give you such a job. Let me pray for your spiritual life. If you have cars, you have houses. 
and your spiritual life is not on fire, you are not doing well. The first index to measure prosperity in the kingdom is the health of your spiritual life. That your prayer life fire, word life fire, fellowship with the spirit fire. No room for up today, down tomorrow. I pray for you, fresh fire upon your prayer life. 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 Every lukewarmness, slumber, gluttony, these spirits that destroy your spiritual fervency, I declare in the name of Jesus, receive victory over them. The grace that can keep a man in the presence of God, the, the staying power that you can stay with the world, stay in prayer, not rush in and rush out and one power. God is not a magician. I pray for you, the unction to stay, receive it in the name of Jesus. Every dimension in the spirit that is supposed to have been activated, there are some of you now, listen, there are levels of graces you should have left. Sincerely, there are dimensions of power. There are haziness, certain dimensions of haziness in your spiritual perception. There is a level of authority. There is an office you should be sitting on now, but it's not yet there. I pray for you. The mantle that will shift you to that level, may that grace come upon you now. The mantle that will shift you to that level. Makatoska barakato. May that grace come upon you now. Listen. Everything in your life that has refused to grow. God gave you a ministry that has refused to grow. No membership, nobody is placing a demand on your grace. God gave you a business, it has refused to grow. No increase. No impact. Anything that is alive grows. Whatever has stopped growth in your life, I bring that thing to an end now. Finally, let me pray, please. The spirit of infirmity. I told you that this is, this is I came to pray and rebuke that spirit. Because that spirit, like the angel of death, is moving over families, attacking children, attacking all kinds of people. Headache will just kill a man for nothing. Kata, and they will say it's cancer. Pain around your breast, they will say you have a malignant, a tumor. See, let me tell you, whatever you don't fight to victory will remain in your life. Challenges are not the issue, but that you stand and fight the good fight of faith until you see what God said. If you have not seen what God said, don't stop. I pray for you. The spirit of a warrior, the grace that will cause you to refuse to allow things that are not the will of God. May that grace rest upon you now. As a body of believers, we agree that the spirit of infirmity first over this family, number two over this territory, and number three over the body of Christ. Thou spirit of infirmity, we banish your operation now. Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day not the noisome pestilence the destruction that wasted at noonday the spirit of death if there is anyone here that death is looming around the corridors of your life or your loved ones or those connected to you spiritually and by bloodline i declare let death lose its grip over you now
receive the last prayer that I pray for you to end this miracle service. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Please listen. Honor is a real grace. You can do everything to bring honor and yet honor will not come. Honor is not about usurping authority over people. There is a real grace. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, even thy God has anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. I pray for you. The kind of honor that needs to distinguish you for the sake of the kingdom in this season. May that grace and may that honor rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands everywhere and give Jesus praise. Mighty God. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Father, we thank you. By the wave offering we receive, we receive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please drop your hands. Please let me say this. Let there be no movement till we are done. Every time we are almost done, many of you cancel out everything God has done through disobedience. Just give me two minutes and then we must leave. There are people here who are yet to truly surrender their life. Please keep standing. We believe in soul winning. And in reality, we believe that it is the greatest miracle. There are people here who came to this place confused, looking for Jesus sincerely. Religion refused to give you. Sometimes we men of God disappointed you but you are still looking for Jesus. And there are others who are saying, Apostle, I love Jesus, but the way my life is right now, I need help. Now, whatever, whether you are inside, outside, we have two minutes for you. Please, win that war this night. Don't sit down dilly darling. You know that you need Jesus. Wherever you are, inside, outside, I don't want you to be ashamed. Aside from overflow 3, overflow 2B, and overflow floor, you can just move to your various projector screens. But you are here, quickly. I'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and stand here right now. Quickly. I don't expect you to be thinking about it. Keep standing. It's something you should know. Keep coming. Run to Jesus. Don't let any friend hold your hand. And say, don't embarrass yourself. Don't let any relative keep you bound. Our time is gone, but your salvation is important. Keep coming. Keep coming. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed. Win that war and come. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. If you are not sure, make your way and come quickly. Apostle, I'm a leader in my fellowship. Join them quickly. We have one more minute, please. Those coming from outside, quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Those online following from whatever nation, doesn't matter. Once you are following and you can hear my voice, listen to me, please. Believers, listen. It is important that we never lose out on soul winning. Let me say this. It is not just an evangelical agenda. It is not an orthodox agenda. It is not a man of God agenda. It is the only way men come to this kingdom. No matter what we do, please, you are a man of God here, hear me. Don't be careless over soul winning. It is important that people be given an opportunity, except you don't know what salvation is. If you really understand what the new birth is, you will desire even your enemy to be saved. It is the only gateway. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. Salvation is a giver's gift to you. You receive. 
I salute all of you who have come here. Some of you are standing here rededicating your lives. Some of you are not even sure what you are doing, honestly. Some of you are here genuinely for the first time. It doesn't matter. You see, the thing about the love of God is that the moment you call on his mercy, he will act as though he's not seeing what is wrong with you again. The mercy of God is powerful. Religion is what drives people away from God. Lift your right hand. Those around the various overflows, join them. Please say after me, sincerely. Jesus is in this place. You are not reciting a poem. This is from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you are the Son of God. This night, I receive Jesus as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that according to Scripture, I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I'm not only heaven bound, but I reign in life. I receive of the Holy Spirit. From today, I declare and forever that I'm a child of God. Amen. I declare over you by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven the Lord himself is granting you a new beginning. I pray that you will know the ministry of the Holy Spirit in a new and a fresh way. I pray for you that you will know the anointing in a mighty way. For many of you who are standing here, may God use you to become mighty men and women of God. In the name of Jesus, I bless you with hunger for spiritual things. I bless you with passion for the house of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. A big congratulations. Now, please, I want all of you alongside um, those at the various overflows. There should be someone waving his or her hands. Please, I'd like you to follow them very quickly. And there will be a group of people who will address you. Let's do that very quickly. Let's do that quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Hallelujah. Now, our time is gone, but... Um, Please listen, we're about to take the announcements. Welcome the first timers and we're done. I sincerely apologize. Pray for us by God's grace. I know that God will grant us the grace. We'll soon have our place and we'll reschedule our services to allow us finish on time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I, I, know, I welcome everybody. We're going to welcome the first timers now. But particularly, I just want to honor a few people first. I want to bless our precious people, the delegates from um, the King's Court and the Oasis. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. The redeemed Christian Church of God. That's, um, that's the church that Nathaniel Bassi pastors. God bless you. Thank you. There yeah, are a group of people here, adorable people. These people take, they take care of me so much every time we have a meeting around their place and um, we love you. Thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. I want us to honor the pastor from Ukraine. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you very much. And um, now I know there are so many people. Please don't find offense. It's by no way belittling you. Every We believe the law of honor is one of our foundational um, values, our pillars here. I just felt I am indebted to some of the people that are connected to these ones. And so I just wanted to to do that honor and i think i hope i'm right yes it should be him um i saw elisha maman somewhere he just squeezed himself that's him may god bless you very humble and very great man i love you may the lord bless you in the name of jesus every other person who has come here especially for those of you who came from so very far um aside from those that i called within a few minutes i'll request that you come um, and stand here so that we will honor you. We believe in honor. And I know that in many churches, they have different ways of receiving people, but we don't fake things and we don't pretend things here. When we call you out to honor you, we really mean it. It's not some Christian stage managed acting, no. Genuinely, sincerely. So wherever you are, aside from the extreme overflows, I would request that you just move to the front of your projector stand. But for those of us who are here, 
overflow one, overflow two. Please gallantly walk and come right here. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we want to honor you. You're that important and we love you. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.